Let's go! What a great ad! Woohoo! Alright, let's get in here. Welcome in, everybody! Let's head over to the intermission and see how all this new tech is working out. Oh boy, things may not look super different to you guys out there, but uh, they definitely look different from this end of things. We got a lot of snazzy new stuff on board here, but hopefully it just goes to make the show more enjoyable for all of you guys. Um, forgive me if uh, it takes me a minute to figure out all the bells and whistles over here on this end, but I think I think it should be fairly smooth. Welcome in everybody to Friday Night Fights 4.46. I believe that that's the one that we're on, and correct me if I'm wrong, or don't, because I'm running the show now. I'm your host, Zeal Jake. You can just call me Jake, though, because Zeal Jake's a lot longer and unnecessary, and I'm going to be doing the commentary for your Friday Night Fights tonight. We'll have the players up here with the official matches in a minute, but it looks like we got a warm-up match with Ganondorf and Captain Falcon. Ooh-wee, that's snazzy. That's pretty fun. Oh, and that's a wizard's foot right to the face. I absolutely love this matchup. You know if you're playing Captain Falcon, you've got to respect your father. Respect your father, all you sons out there. I know that he may not understand your, your choice of wardrobe with the pink and the white and the spandex and the nipple studs and whatnot, but doesn't mean that you should not respect your fathers, okay? Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in, Legit Habits. Welcome in, D-Ward. The 96th one, and thank you for subscribing. I hope you enjoy your emotes, even if you're timed out by the Nightbot for spamming them. Even if. Hello, Zeal Bird. Welcome in. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're here to enjoy some Smash and some commentary and some technical difficulties, because you know, ironing those out is an important part of this. All right, I'm gonna hop over now and actually bring us into the, uh, the stream room here so that we can get a bigger gameplay going on now that I've gotten some screen time up there. Who do we have on right now? Okay, so Shake Zula's playing. Shake Zula, and I don't know who's playing the Ganondorf right now. Gemini, this is Trivium? Maybe, is that right? Dury is. There he is. He's over there playing. Playing Rob. Yes, I guessed it. Gosh, I'm so good at this. I gotta update the scoreboard pre uh, pre actual matches just to just to get myself in the zone. It keeps me waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, oh, oh. here we go. Look at that. Save. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I can update the scoreboard.
shake your freaking Zula. Or maybe I'm just gonna have some technical difficulties. Uh oh. Well, I guess it's good to get these kinks worked out before the stream. Oh, I hear the call for stop your friendlies. We might be getting started soon. But it looks like it's time to get our scoreboard assistant issues ironed out. Bear with me one moment, ladies and gentlemen, while we get this figured out. Thank God for that roaming data. We got an interesting match, Trivium versus Trivium. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> right on fights. I would have taken decades browsing for these. Uh... That's a title. I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong quarter for the title. That's a good idea. And then down. I think I have what? One more? That's the last one. There she is. Welcome in, Reaper Dark. No, it just updated when you did that. Okay. So we're Woo! done. Thank you very much to our tech support, Todd. And we hit swap, and then we hit swap again, and everything works. Beautiful. All right. We're about to get into round one matches now, everybody. Give a round of applause for Todd fixing your scoreboard for you so you know what's going on throughout the night now. All right. There's that beautiful smash soundtrack. Okay, I can hear it now. We're getting in here. Let's see what the bracket is looking like. We got ultimate 4.46. Hmm, 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 hmm.
B flat and Norse Fury, Mammoth Guy, and Joe Marvel. I believe, I believe, might be the one that you guys are going to see coming up on stream here in just a moment. <laughs> yep, there we go. We got Mammoth Guy on the right with Krom and his opponent, Joe Marvel on K. Rule. So let's get these guys up on our scoreboard, and I promise that we'll shake off those Monday jitters in just a few minutes. Joe Marvel looking like it might be a first time for him, or he's just using a different tag, and I have no idea what I'm talking about. The name's not working. I forget to update names. No, the names aren't working. Yeah, 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 there we go. Okay. All right, round one, and we're off to a pretty quick start. It looks like Mammoth Guy's already managed to take one stock off of Marvel. <clears throat> he is bullying this croc off a of stage right now. Plus the game sound, minus the mic. Okay, let's get these adjustments on the fly here. Fine tuning. All right, you let me know how that one sounds, and I can give you a little bit more and a little bit less if you want to. Hits him with a wake-up attack, but that's not nearly going to be enough. He is just going to town right now. But now he's going to the bottom blast zone as he loses his first stock. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, the three-stock dream. Oh, I was about to say edge guarding's on point, but just gets clipped by the helicopter blades. Just barely, but it still counts. It still counts, Mom. Oh, and he goes for the <laughs> up B spike. That's looking pretty cute. Okay, Mammoth Guy. Okay. Coming in hot. We got a fun start over here. We're having... We're all friends, okay? We're all friends, all right? All right, let's see where they're going to go next. Thinking it over a little bit, hovering around. I, I'm not sure they know even where they want to go. Wait, what did we end up on? <laughs> I looked away for a quarter second, and that's whenever they decided to pick the stage. Staying on Crom, but it looks like our boy Joe Marvel is going to mix it up a little bit. And he picks Cloud. He says, hey, sword for sword. Put away those crocodile claws. Oh, starting off with that forward smash big. Hoping he's just going to run in and take it. Let's see how this transpires. Okay, they're trading pretty evenly so far. Blow for blow until we get a forward smash at the ledge and almost get a kill. And get a kill. What am I saying almost for? That was ridiculous. And with Cloud's weak uh, horizontal recovery, he just has it. That's just his kill. Less than 30 seconds in. What was that? 25 seconds in. Goes for another big F smash, but not quite. Connects the down, down finisher of the Dancing Blade. Cloud's still making a little bit of space for himself. You know what? He's racking up the percents here. It's looking a little bit better than the K-Roll game was for Joe Marvel. But um, still struggling to find that kill. Let's see. Oh, and there goes the, there goes the limit. He can still kill without limit at 120, though. It's not... Uh, 
Oh, a quick counter, and that's going to be too far away for Cloud to recover. It's got one of those predictable recovery paths where you really have to, you know, put in a lot of effort to mix it up to avoid those, those sorts of reads. But you know what? It's to be expected from both of these guys, realistically. But Cloud, without his own counter, can't really punish, and not as easily punish the predictable recovery from Krom. Well, it's looking like it's going pretty similar pacing to the game against K. Rule as well. Just oh, <laughs> until an SD from Mammoth Guy. Looks like Joe Marvel's just not really, not really, quite able to find his mark. And as I say that, hits one limit. Let's see if he can manage to find himself one more stock before he has to say goodbye to this round. Yeah, he's trying to space a little bit here. This is pretty nice. I'm taking it slow, you know what? Oh, he goes for a high recovery. You know what? I like it, but that was a bit extra high. I like the mix-ups from how how much his low recoveries have been punished. But man, that, that cloud, whew, he was in the sky. He's really living up to his name. I reached for that one, but we made it work. Bounced him off the ground. No conversion. More game sound, he says. Okay. We can give it to you. We'll give it to you. You guys can have all the game audio you want. How is like so? It still looks like it's pretty low. Let me hit you with another one. I'm trying to watch these bars, but there's not much audio going on in the... Um, there's not much audio in the uh, in the like the menus here, so way better though. Yeah, so I just realized a little bit of a little bit of technical insight backside for you guys. It wasn't the game capture that was low, but rather the all desktop audios that was low. So my my micro adjustments to the uh, to the game audio were doing absolutely nothing in comparison to the uh, negative twenty decibels desktop audio. But if that's going over your head, don't bother. Just figured I'd explain myself a little bit here for for the sake of things. It's not like I'm not trying for you guys. Bracket link, and there you go. Asking you shall receive. Look at this. Look at this Nightbot, man. He's really on top of it. Thanks, Nightbot. All right, Mammoth Guy takes the win. 2-0 against Joe Marvel. Well fought, Joe Marvel. You'll have another chance over in the loser's bracket. Don't give up hope yet. You're a winner at the heart. Let's head over into the intermission and see this pretty face. Yeah, there we go. By that, I mean this ratty hair and hobo sweater. Hell yeah. We're representing real good over here. Maybe I'll get myself some fine EE merch soon. Get some get some name emblazon or something like that. Todd the Nightbot. That's him. So how's everybody doing? Excited for a uh, what, what's sure to be an interesting tournament? We got um, a few more attendees than last time. I know that the, the ice and rain has been keeping people away so that's pretty cool I look like Kurt Cobain I get that one a lot I really do if I could manage to push out some facial hair over here have more than more than 12 hairs on my face at a time maybe I could actually do it I get uh, I get Kurt Cobain and Leonardo DiCaprio young Leonardo DiCaprio a lot there's also a guy from Dancing with the Stars that I get a lot. I, I just get a lot of people that call me out for lookalikes, and I don't know why necessarily, but it was for the first time the other day that I went to a Chinese restaurant, and a guy stopped me as I was entering, and he said, oh, you know who you look like? And I was waiting for it. I was like, oh, he's going to say Kurt Cobain. He's going to say, you know, Leo DiCaprio. Um, or another one is um, a musician whom I'll get to later, as if Kurt Cobain's not a musician. I always forget his name. I want to call him August, but I forget his name. Anyways, but he said I look like a guy from the Millers. I didn't even know what it is. I had to go and look it up. I still don't know who he's talking about that I look like. It was a refreshing change of pace, but um, I wasn't able to follow him at all. Speaking of not following, I don't know who's coming up next in the game. Never heard of the Millers. I don't know. He told me it was a great movie as well and that I should go watch it. So maybe he's on to something. Maybe he was absolutely crazy. Maybe he was trolling me. I don't know. It was refreshing to not hear someone say that for once. Not that I necessarily hate that. It's just like, I know what's coming at this point. Um, so who are we looking at coming up next? We've got things highlighted in green over here. Um, so we got, next match is Yo Waifu. Ooh, I wonder if we're gonna see him on some Bearmont. 
Mm, will he take my suggestion? All right, so next one is your wife who sucks and Rika. I now see the um, Evansville Twitch logo on those, so I'll, I'll make sure to keep closer track of those in the future. Let's head on over to the live scene and get our scoreboard updated. Which one's on which side? No idea, but we'll put them up there for you guys anyways. All right, so actually, little insight for you guys here. Your waifu reached out on social media earlier today and asked, What character should I play at tonight's local? To which I promptly respond, Belmont. Because, you know, Belmont, originally, a lot of people were saying was going to be a ridiculous OP character, right? They've just got absolute crazy projectiles, and they said they're going to zone everyone out, their projectiles are way too strong, yada yada. And then, uh, not only am I seeing them underrepresented generally everywhere, but especially in this venue, I have yet to see a single Belmont compete in an FNF. Now, I haven't been here for all of them by any means, not that I don't plan to from this point to the future, but I haven't seen any Belmonts. So I came over here and I asked him, I said, hey, play some Belmonts for me. You know, the Italian Belmonts, you know, the, the series famous Italian Belmonts. They're in Europe. I don't know what the Belmont, I don't know what lineage the Belmonts have. What nationality? Why can't we have an Italian Belmont? Huh? You're in a Mario game for, for Nintendo's sake. So anyways, I said play some Belmonts. Yeah, I don't think they're Italian. They're definitely not Italian. Um, they're definitely not Italian. I don't know what, I, I still don't know what they are. But they're not Italian. But hey, come on. Come on. Welcome in, young prodigy. Oh, it's Axu. Is this Axu? I'm trying to pick up those names, but anyways, welcome in. I'm glad you stopped by, and I hope you enjoy the match in front of you. We've got Rika versus your waifu, which I need to swap the sides on, and we'll get right into it. Your waifu on K. Rule, which was one of the requests for him, so it looks like he's honoring somebody's request, at least, even if not mine. I'm not angry. Hashtag not salty. And we've got Rika on Roy, a hard hitter. I don't know much about this matchup, but I can't imagine that it would... Um, Oh my lord! I was about to say favor K rule too heavily, but <laughs> I say that and then he throws out a heavy hand. Sends Roy careening to the blast zone. Stand on this the edge of the stage. What is this what is this stage control strategy? He's uh he's controlling the entire match from the corner of the stage. Crowd and cannon, and just like that, fires back with a strong forward smash with only 9% on the board. Still an even game. Oh here it is. Runs right into the blunderbuss. I love the Acme sound effects for the for the firing on him. Oh my lord! And he charges the smash. He out charges the counter. Just holds on to it. What a smart play. Welcome in, Eli. No song requests here right now, but I've heard Todd is a big fan of song requests in general. So uh, hold your breath for the future. Might be big things in store for you. Oh, nice falling back air. Chases him with a grab. This is pretty good so far. Your waifus. He's got Rika on the ropes. He's got his number right now. He's looking to close this out with a parry into down smash, but not quite a fast enough option on his follow-up. Rika with plenty of time to shield, and then he just decides that it's time for that stock to go. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens on this last stock here. 109, 120% Roy. You know what? K. Roll says, uh, this is my ship. But apparently didn't assert dominance quite hard enough because Roy's still coming back. He didn't get the message yet. Oh, follows him in there. And a little bit of super armor on the forward tilt goes a long way. Game one, going to your wife who sucks. I love the victory song for K. Roll. Gets me, gets me right in my heart. It's, a, it's just such a jolly little tune. All right, let's see if they both persist on their character picks. One of the things that I'm absolutely loving about Smash Ultimate is the character diversity. And, and I say this about each game like consecutively that follows up the last Smash game because there's always more viable options and there's always more people playing different things. And I love that. And speaking of that, we get to see Rika swap on to Snake now. So, very different playstyle from Roy, obviously. Let's see what this match gives us. 
your waifu over here with his own change, changing color, if I remember. I think he was a green croc last time. Now he's on that teal. The look on his face when his eyeball pops out. Yikes. I, I'll have to pay more attention. I haven't seen that one. Do you think he's going to hold the directional input to, to do his his chosen victory animation for me so I can see that one again? Sure do hope so. Alright, I was expecting more of a war of attrition. Rika a bit hesitant to throw out any projectiles yet, but he gets forced off of his up B. Tries to dodge to ledge, but just mistimes it barely. Not able to grab that ledge with the upwards directional air dodge and pretty early death because of that. Looks like he's swapping over to that range game now, grabbing some grabbing some frags, getting him out on the board. I like that. Goes for a big smash attack. Some Nikita here and a counter. I guess the Nikita just went around and said, I don't want no business with that. Oh, nice little, nice little punch in the back. Hey, you know what? You oh, I'll scratch your back. You scratch mine. What a stage spike. Nikita sent him right out. There was a little bit of opportunity in there for a, a, a tech, but uh, I'm not going to say miss tech because uh, I wasn't going to hit that one. <laughs> Down smash so safe. Just covering him on whichever side he is. And oh my goodness, the runaway, the, the runaway drone. I don't know what Snake's Up B is called, but uh, it's called... Hit and K rule right now. Oh, his own grenade sabotages him. Alright, this one looking a lot more even than the last match was. Looking like Snake might have been the right swap. Knowing his characters and where he's comfortable over here. This is what I'm. Oh my goodness, another Nikita direct hit! He just puts that Nikita straight in the fight path of that croc. And, uh, well, you're not going anywhere. Oh, a really late recovery, I suppose. Not sure exactly what happened there. I, I really thought Snake's recovery went higher. I guess I didn't see how low he had started it, because that ran out much sooner than I would have imagined. But either way, nice turnaround into the tilt after the cannonball there. Real quick to catch the cross-up from Snake. That was pretty good. And now we're on a last stock situation here of Game 2. So let's see if uh, Rika wants to take it into a game three. Assuredly, he wants to, but rather, let's see if Rika can take it into a game three. Or if your wife who sucks is going to close it out here and proceed on the winner's side. Dash attack comes up just short. Rika fires back with a dash attack of his own, and these guys are just playing hot potato with the, with the frag grenades. <laughs> Game sound is perfect right now. I'm glad you guys can hear it. There are too many amazing uh, soundtracks as well as sound effects, uh, Roy Star KO, to miss in this game. Zoning with a couple frags of zone and trying to outrange the uh, outspace the the crown, but just getting clipped, just getting clipped a little bit right there. That crown's heavy, man. Made of gold. Nice little falling down air. Both of these characters approaching pretty good kill percents. Quite a couple of moves that would be able to secure the kill at this point. Now it's just to just to see who wants to close in and get that kill move. Oh, and the the throw into the forward tilt. It's gonna secure the kill move. But your white foe sucks. Oh, watch that eye. Watch that eye. That's not the one. That's not the one we want. All right. Well, maybe we'll get to see some more K roll play, and we'll see that. We'll see that. Was that was that the one? Oh, I didn't even notice it. You're making a big deal about this over here, and I'm not even picking up on it. But wouldn't be the first thing that I missed. Wouldn't be the first thing I missed. I'll have to pay even closer attention next time. I'll totally see it one of these times, or maybe I'll just never see it. Who knows? <laughs> Talking about eyes all red and stuff, man. I'm so glad that I was able to, to get over the, uh, the sickness that I had this week before coming in today. I got, I'm glad I got it midweek and not closer to the weekend because, gosh, that is a way to just soil the weekend. I'm feeling a lot better now. Thanks for asking, everybody. GG. and GG it was. I feel like that's one thing I like around here for the vibe of the, of the local is that a lot of the players are very... They're very friendly. A lot of people are, are very good about keeping their cool. I mean, I know it's just a local, but good gosh, with my own competitive nature, I know how heated I can get sometimes. So it's always good to see people being really patient and respectful after after matches. That's a good that's a good climate to have, right? So next game coming up on stream. Um, I see them all in green in general, but I don't see which specifically is coming up right now. They have I guess they have time count. So I guess. Pop a piece in retro is one of our one of our candidates for stream is pop a piece in retro. We've also got critical and well, I guess. Oh wait, they follow alphabetical order. Is, it, is this not right? No, it's not. 
We don't follow alphabetical order around here. That's not how we have it, because we just did I before H, which is also in green. I'll get my stuff sorted one day. Nothing nothing you all need to worry about. Nah, no, not a thing. Let me do all the heavy lifting over here. So you know. You just enjoy the show. Alright. Let's see if I can't just eyeball who we got up right now. We'll see those names coming over in just a moment. Hey, I know that guy. That's Baleen. I'm doing it, Mom. I'm really doing it. All right. So, Baleen and... What else is up? Oh, it's Geo. Baleen and Geo. Where are they at? All right, we'll just get the names on there. All right, going into game one with Lucina on the Tiki skin. I know he likes that one. I've seen him use it before. Okay, so we got Geo versus Baleen. Pokemon Trainer versus Tiki, Lucina. Oh, there we are. So, winner's round two is actually where this match is taking place. So both of these players have made it through their first match, and uh, now they're on to round two. We've got the swap coming on to Charizard. Not at a, actually, not at a considerably high percent, but seeing maybe if he can't get that up smash kill onto Lucina. A couple of reasons to change to Charizard. Usually players will do it whenever they themselves are at a high percent, but there's an argument to be made for switching to Charizard when your opponent's at a high percent too. I know there's a lot of players that are pretty um, dissatisfied by Charizard's performance in general, but you know what? Of course, from a viewing point of view, uh, from a perspective, oh my gosh! Geo goes in for the edge guard with the back air. A little stage bounce. Not sure if it was teched. It looked like it would have been teched. And he goes into a second up B and clips him with it for the kill. That was absolutely spicy, but Geo's having none of that. He's not shook. He's still securing that kill eventually, no matter when it comes in. Welcome in, Alpha Dog. What is up, Indiana? Um, not much. Decent weather's up right now. Uh, sun, sun was up today, which is an improvement over the, uh, over the past week. So that's pretty good. Welcome in. Hope you enjoy the show. Man, I'm getting it. I'm getting it over here. You may say solo commentary, but with all the viewers and players in here, too, it doesn't really feel like a solo gig. I can still... There's so much energy. Like, these players just popping off. It is just so much fun to watch. These guys still trading blows pretty evenly right now. Just just looking like a good match in general. Uh, sitting on Ivysaur, just trying to space things out. Meanwhile... Geo is just on the hunt. This guy is always playing the aggro game. Big throw coming in from Charizard. Once again, both players at high percent, so a good place to be using Charizard. Gets a little bit of a gimp with the fire there, but not leading into anything. In particular, trading forward air with forward smash uh, is not a good deal for Charizard. <laughs> Absolutely is not. Cool down throw, but obviously not converting into up air at this ridiculous percent. Oh, nice little clip with the dolphin slash through the stage there. Gotta watch your toes, Ivysaur. Got to watch those toes. Gets him with a really big hitbox on. I believe it was up smash. Got a little behind hitbox. Might have been a falling up air. Hard to tell whenever these guys are moving around so fast sometimes. Thank you for the compliment on commentary. I've been feeling it recently. I've been seeing a lot of love from the community and from the viewers. Um... And it's inspired me to keep going. I, I really like that, so thank you. Uh, a little bit of a juggle going out from uh, Baleen right now. Looking pretty good. Both players at, uh, at, at a similar mid percent for the moment. They're just literally just firing back and forth aerials one at a time. Like, these, this match has been so close all the way through. Pokemon Trainer is just back there just screaming commands indiscriminately. <laughs> I can see him flailing his arms. Sorry. Sorry. Oh my goodness, and he kills with the up B. Not even the regular combo confirms that we see, but just grabs it raw right there. He says, do not be hanging above me. He says, that is a no-fly zone. And uh, Baleen actually takes the first game. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's see what game two has to offer. Is Geo going to switch? I know he's got a lot of pocket picks. This man is all over the board on character picks. Uh, let's see what he's got. <clears throat> Looking like we might see some inkling action from the hover here. Not super sure. Driving seven hours to Michigan is a pain. Hour 15 to go. Oh, you're on the road right now. 
you tuning in for the uh, for the audiobook experience in the background? Well, man, we'll help keep you company. We'll help keep you awake. Good luck. Eyes on the road. Stay alert. You got this. A little bit of a juggle combo starting for Geo here. Looking pretty nice. Geo looking really comfortable on these character swaps. It's always good to see him. Uh, oh my goodness, converting from the down tilt into the roller. And then he waits out for him to break out before he throws in the up smash. That was an interesting choice. Maybe he didn't think he would have enough time before the mash, so he's just going for the react only. Um, not sure if that was uh, completely intentional or uh, or what, but you know what? It worked. He got those hits, and that's pretty cool. Suddenly, we're seeing a very high percentage on Baleen. Edge guard situation set up. Baleen reverses it really quickly with a grab and goes for a really cheeky spike early on, but with Inkling's phenomenal recovery, Geo says, None of that! It's the bucket for you! Alright, Squirtle's back out here now. We know water counters ink, right? So you can wash it away, something like that. Something, something totally legitimate uh, game terminology. Apparently, Squirtle not working out too well for him. Um, opted to stay on Squirtle, even though Geo already had a bit of percent on him. Switches to Ivysaur and finds that kill almost immediately. You'll see a lot of people, obviously, uh, switching off of Squirtle if the opponent is above certain percents for, for you know, obvious combo reasons. But he still gave Squirtle his run. Of course, once he did switch to Ivysaur, immediate kill coming out for him. And now he's uh, opted to stay on Ivysaur rather than swap through the double character and look for a little bit more damage. Uh, game actually still staying pretty even after being able to find that kill secure. And as I say that, another 30, 40 damage piled up onto Baleen. A little bit of a miss from the roller there, and Baleen is just throwing out these grounded aerials. You gotta love them, absolutely. Those, those hitboxes. Ooh, wee! That is a big paintbrush. Another kill going to Geo. Looking like he wants to take this to a round three situation and said, nah, that was a fluke. I was just warming up. Look, I'm on Inkling now. Oh my goodness, a really big up smash comes out and Geo, or Baleen rather, manages to uh, stay away from taking any damage on that stock right there. So a uh, last stock, even damage. Let's see what happens. Baleen looking pretty fresh with a couple of combos there, but uh, drops his uh, platform continue. Coming in with uh, his own little air combos with the, with the up airs from Geo. Trading back and forth, and it looks like Baleen is getting the uh, smaller end of the stick here. He's kind of got him on the ropes now. He's got a little bit of ink on him. Nothing we can't wipe off, though. You know, rub a little bit of dirt on it. I wonder if the green on Pokemon Stadium is turf, like uh, artificial turf, or actually grown? But uh, I guess that's nothing we need to be concerned about now, because uh, we got more important things to pay attention to, like how Geo closed out Game 2 with a win. Firing back with his own win, and we're going to a Game 3. Let's see if he stays comfortably on the Inkling, or if he uh, switches to Wario for no reason. <laughs> that's some hashtag shots fired. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember if it was actually Wario, but I remember I was so bamboozled. Uh, a little bit of Apex for you right there. I was so bamboozled whenever we were here last week and we saw him take a perfectly content win on his... Uh, it was either Toon Link or Mega Man, something of that ilk. And then just switched to Wario off the back of a beautiful win. And then he <laughs> lost with Wario. And then he switched to another character that he hadn't even played that set yet. It's so funny to see this man's ideology whenever he swaps to the characters. I'm not sure if he does it just for practice, just for fun, just for style, or for actual, like, uh, uh, competitive edge. But either way, it's, it's funny and fun to see. Stays on Inkling this time, and we're going to run it back. He's looking to, looking to take that W here as they move on to Yoshi's Island Melee, a stage absolutely close to my heart. Just so much fun, and there's a lot of green and yellow hues going on in this palette here. So let's uh, let's let's get a little bit of squinting action going on to keep up with these characters as they're moving around here. Splat bomb off left side of stage. Don't worry about that. I've got plans for it later. Setting up some nice edge guard situations though with these back airs, just zoning really well and not giving Bailey much opportunity to to have his say with this matchup. Oh, 
both of these guys just kind of trying to space their aerials pretty well and uh, not committing too hard to any sort of engage. Looks like Baleen has given up on the on the Razor Leaf and uh, given up on the Ivasaur in general now as he approaches a higher percent. He swaps to the Charizard. We've seen the Charizard get some pretty big things for him so far in this matchup though. Throws out the Flare Blitz and just going to connect with Geo's Shield. Punishes it with uh, I believe an Up Smash but I believe it was an Up Smash while out of ink so he got the, the weaker hit off of that. Regardless, not able to secure a kill despite being at 150, and that's probably gonna be it. Yup. Right back in with the up smash. Swirtle looking for a conversion off of this platform. Nice little down tilt or forward tilt there, clipping him as he fell for a, you know, just that extra little bit that you need sometimes. Let's see how long he hangs with the Squirtle Squad before he moves on to Ivysaur. It looks like he's feeling himself on Squirtle right now. And suddenly he's feeling the pain on Squirtle onto Ivysaur. Let's look to get something done here. A little bit of a uh, little bit of edge guarding, a little bit of kill potential. Let's see if we can't find our feet in this game here. Nice little tether recovery, saying not gonna edge guard me today. Inkling recovery once again. You know, outside of two framing, just very hard to punish in general. Oh, he actually decides to go high this time, and then once again you see even when going high, still hard to punish because that landing hitbox. Ivysaur not having a very fun time with this one. Looking like he could do with a Hyper Potion or a Revive right now. Just say, give me some of that percent back. Where did it all go? Looking like Baleen's at a one stock deficit right now with pretty similar percents. Maybe he'll be able to find something for himself. Maybe he'll be able to find one of those four forward smashes. And as I say that, he says, oh, forward smash isn't working over here. Let me try it over here. Forward Smash connects and Baleen takes his stock. Let's see if he's able to get any percent off of this. Running around with Charizard. Oh, unfortunately facing the wrong direction. Not able to get the turnaround out of shield for the punish off of Geo's miss smash attack. And Geo says, hey, let's run it back. Takes the kill on the second one. Once again, full stock lead for Geo now. Looking like he's commanding this matchup now that he's found himself on the Inkling. The rawest of reads coming through. At least we got EAO in the background. Give it up for the Yoshis teaching us our vowels. Man, Baleen is looking pretty clean, just throwing out these back airs, just spacing these aerials really well. You know, fading back with a lot of, a lot of active aerials. Uh, but Geo just doesn't have it. You know, he just blocks and he says, "What of it?" Not able to get those two frames on the edge guard. Of course, also outside of the two frames, the hitbox is large enough to cover it beforehand. And there it is. Actually starts that one from a ledge hang position. So maybe that's the key to it. Maybe if he got out there a little bit, he might have a might have a better time of it. Not necessarily sure. I'm sure some experimentation in the future would help out as well. But uh, it's really hard to, to find those things and to adapt to those on the fly like this. But good to see him grabbing something there, at least before the end of the match in general. It's been a it's been a, a well fought series between these two a, a little little micro series over here but uh, looks like Geo's able to find it once again gives him the bucket there he is in the victory screen with it reminded me of actual Splatoon itself over here the bucket man I mean the bucket's not a rapid blaster saying that I'm not saying that but um, it's not to be ignored in its own right sometimes you know what those bucket players will sneak up on you. Especially once they uh, they released the um, what was it? It was like a uh, it was like a washing machine. Yeah, yeah. There was there was the there was a DLC bucket. You know, free DLC later on. Uh, we call those patches. Uh, but it was like a washing machine slosher, and it had a really long, like linear um, hitbox that then splatted out a little bit at the end, rather than being like most buckets where they're just like, you know as wide as the screen sawed off shotgun style but they, they don't go further than you could sneeze you know and this one had a really linear and like thin it was almost like a sniper bucket which of course goes against the nature of buckets but it was fun just to see some diversity i really liked uh, the creativity with the weapons that they released over time in the splatoon that that being the original one i think i played a lot of the original one i, I played a lot of splatoon 2 as well with it still being out but um not nearly as much as the first the sound effect yeah you gotta hit the is Criticals match still going, or is my phone not updating? Critical. 
Criticill and Fabulous Blitzel are still on the bracket right now. I, I also see that, so I'm not sure if... I'm, assuredly, it's not been running for 21 minutes, um, but... There you go, you got Blitzel120, because she texted about it. So, next match that's going to be up on stage... Looks like we got people on stage pitch right now. Let's head in and figure out who the heck that's going to be. <laughs> Gotta hit up those options for some name entry. Oh, I like this. A new face. Who's it gonna be? Fab. Just the Fab. I had a friend uh, a minute ago named uh, Fabian. We called him Fabs. Say, what's up, Fabs? Jackie doing solo commentary tonight. You know what? So far I am. Not to say that I would uh, usher anybody out if they were to come join me, but uh, I think I might have scared them all off. Maybe I, uh, maybe I should have, um, I don't know, put on some cologne before I came or something. Uh, I don't know. But for now, it's just me. If you have any complaints, they can be mailed in. All right. I still don't know who we actually have up right now. <laughs> Let's go Blitzel! Oh, do we have Blitzel on right now? Uh, so that means this is, oh, Blitz, this is Blitzel, this is Prattle, Prattle, and Fabulous Blitzel, which, uh, Pokemon, let's go. I don't think Fabulous Blitzel is in the roster right now, so this might be a new face. Good to see you, and uh, absolute best of luck uh, in game here in a moment. And uh, hope you enjoy the VOD in the future. Hi, YouTube. All right, Fabulous Blitzel. There we go. Again, Sprattle. That's a regular name around here. I've played this guy before. Um, Prattle's got it. There he is. Okay. Fabulous Blitzel and Prattle. There you go. People are up on there now. Scared them off with the godlike commentary. I, 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 I wouldn't go that far. No, well, 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 you know, we gotta be humble over here. You know what? Head's gonna be so big by the time I'm trying to get out of the venue that I won't be able to fit through the door. How many entrants tonight? Um, 18? Unless my eyes deceive me. 18, I wanna say. Ooh, we got a heavy match. We got a heavy match. The fist bump coming in, and here they go. Off they go, ladies and gentlemen. Retro DDD versus Retro Bowser. He's got the pink hair, too. Do I have him on the wrong sides? I've got him on the wrong sides. I'll get that fixed right away for you guys, and then we go to game one. Fabulous Blitzel on Bowser. Meanwhile, Prattle on DDD. Doesn't this guy play Falco? Doesn't he know that DDD's a fightless bird? He's a penguin. He's a penguin! I love how the flightless bird actually has more jumps than the flying bird. Uh, but I love me a good heavy matchup. We're going to see these guys slugging it out. And it looks like right now, Blissel is off to a fabulous lead. 26 entrants. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about by 8. How about that? Catch me outside. Catch my Gordo outside. Rattle over here trying to make himself a name. Trying to say, hey. You can't just take my stock like that. Not without consequences. Now eat your Gordos. Mom always said, Gordos make you a run. Go up big and strong. I love the run back uh, for the chase into the dash attack. And he follows up with the Gordo. So goofy. These falling nares. Oh my goodness. There's another one. Gordo right to the face. But uh, eventually, Prado's going to have to try to connect with something that's not a uh, metal spiky eyeball minion. If he wants to get any oh potential kill confirms off of this. You know, I like the Gordo pressure, but um, I'm not sure it can be the only option. I don't know. Maybe. Hey, I don't play DDD, and he does. So uh, maybe I'll just sit by and watch. Gordo on the edge. DDD on the edge. Bowser looking dead. Oh. All right. So we've got a 140% uh, lead. 
Or fabulous Blitzel over here. Oh! Finding the kill confirm! Pretty nice, pretty nice. Oh my goodness! Says, step on me, daddy. Oh, and converts into the Gordo! Absolutely ridiculous! Not quite able to secure the kill, though, and he steps back up onto the platform again! Say, uh, watch out! Wide load! King DDD! Good laud! Catch the claws. Doing a little bit of edge guarding here. Oh my goodness, the absolute mad option with the down B next to edge here. I guess it's not quite over yet, but uh, Fabulous Blitzel putting on an absolutely dominating display so far. Uh, goes for another down B at the edge. Looking like a little bit of uh, a, a little bit of, of a last stock nerves potentially coming in here, going for some weird edge guarding options, maybe just having some fun with it. Not sure, but either way, struggling to find this kill confirm. Uh, DDD at a uh, whopping 175, and uh, the takedown takes the win. Fabulous Blitzel, up one game. Noise. Pretty cool. Let's see if they're gonna do any uh, any character swaps. Let's see if they're gonna do any soundtrack swaps. Oh, you know you gotta go that silver and gold. Oh, what did we pick? I didn't see what we picked. I don't know. I saw the I saw the silver and gold hover, being of course Generation Two, my favorite generation. Don't at me or do at me if you want to at Zeal C three four L underscore J four K three and tell me what your favorite Pokemon series is. Just because it's wrong doesn't mean I don't want to know about it. All right, going into game two, Plattle Prattle versus Fabulous Blitzel. Prattle swapping on to Falco this time. And this bird's gonna be moving now. I'm telling you, this is a different kind of bird. I told you I've seen this guy on Falco before. And he's not to be messed with. Looks like he's moving pretty quick now. He's really feeling himself out the gate here to a quick 38%. But doesn't mean that Fabulous Blitzel's gonna take it lying down, but maybe gonna take it sitting down very rapidly on the edge of the stage. Uh, giving me a heart attack. <laughs> Wondering whether or not they're gonna catch the edge. Yikes. That was, uh, that was a bit too spooky for me. But uh, they know what they're doing. All right, all right, coming out here with his claws. Oh my goodness, the parry into the up B. Looking pretty clean. I love seeing some move diversity like that. I love seeing up B used like offensively in this game. It's just such a cool move to watch and it's not like a normal option. As I speak about that, this guy's coming out here with the options on edge guarding. Trades very well and uh, gets himself the kill out there. I think that was a down smash possibly, but not enough time to to grab the back hit of the down smash for behind there. And uh, Prattle just setting himself up another beautiful, beautiful air combo there, all the way up to 54%, and says, I will not get caught. Fabulous Blitz will try in a lot for uh, for these down Bs at the edge and just not able to get them yet. But right there you saw before that down air, these, char these people just knowing so much about their character's recovery distances, just going out just as far as they can. Both uh, Blitzel on the on the Nair and Prattle. Oh, and there's the unfortunate SD. It's gotta happen sometime. It's gotta happen sometime. Prattle takes round two on the bird, and a quick one at that. Uh, that had to be close to a minute. I wasn't actually watching the timer, but uh, whew. let's see if Blitzel can't shake it off and uh, fire back with something good here. Going into Game three. R.I.P. Capital. Rest in Peach. She gotta freshen up that edge guard. Gotta mix it up a little bit. I mean, you know what? I know that booty don't lie, but like, come on. 
Oh, I love this jam, man. It's KK Slider. Let's go. All right. Prattle out here with the trigger finger, throwing out some blue lines. There are blue in this game, right? It sounded weird, like, saying it out loud. I've never said it before, but uh, throwing out some blue lines, I guess. Had to diversify. Somehow, oh my goodness, and the high hitbox of the dare secures him a kill. Lordy lord. Looking like he's trying to close this one out now. Saying no more games. Up air. Up tilt, up air, up tilt, forward air. Goes for the down air again, but not this time. Same option coming out from Blitzel. Not quite gonna cut it right now. Oh, a little bit of a gimp. Grabs the ledge. Big charge down smash going for a read. Might even have secured a kill if it had actually landed with those, those heavy hitters like Bowser. They can grab those. Oh, able to get the gimp off of the forward air there. Once again, trading with Bowser's recovery. Oh, catches him with the fire. Cook the bird. Down B, up B, rather. Lying to you. Looking, oh, like that might have been a kill, but just not quite on the spacing. Thinking that Prattle might have ran further in stage, but not today. Oh, what was that? Looking like, looking like a trip. Looking like we were playing Brawl. I couldn't even imagine what was going on right there. Prattle is just moving all over the stage with this one right now. This bird is swinging his arms. He's feeling himself. He's having fun. Let's see if Fabulous Blitzel can manage to take a stock here. All right. That always feels good. Always feels good to vindicate yourself and get that stock. You know what? Because even if you're down, it's good to know you're not out sometimes. Because you know... You know everybody has those games! Oh my lord! Where did that stock go? I was trying to do some color commentary over here. Something a little bit uplifting. Talk about uplifting. Just uplifted his percent and threw him off the stage. Oh my lord! And suddenly, we are in a last stock situation, but Prattle closes it out. Oh my goodness. Out of absolutely nowhere! What was that mad stock? What was that mad stock? That stock disappeared. All right, Prattle takes it 2-0, but not without a not without a pretty fun <laughs> last effort from Fabulous Blitzel right there. That was ridiculous. Damn you, Nightbot, with your 10 out of 10 threat termination setting. Nightbot over here. Uh, Power tripping. All right, looks like we got the others already sitting down. And who? Wait, who was this? This was Shake Zula. Shake Zula and Darkholm. Mm, that's, that's sure to be an interesting, an interesting matchup. We got some hard hitters over here. Both of those guys being pretty high seeds. I'm not super sure exactly where they're at, but uh, it's, always, it, it's always sure to be a, a fun. An entertaining series whenever the higher caliber players go up against each other. Not to say that I can't enjoy anybody playing Smash for that matter. I mean, heck, Bronze League Heroes is a thing for a reason, right? When you like the game, you like the game. Whoop, whoop, prattle. All right, so we've got Rob from Jake Sula. No, uh, no big surprise here. Simon! No knee! Is it the, is it the Belmont of my dreams? It is, and it's a Simon player nonetheless. It's not even Richter. Let's go, ladies and gents. Shake Zula versus Darkholm, game one. Trading projectiles here, and uh, looks like Simon's coming up a bit short. Simon's such a Chad, he is, he is Virgin Richter. Let's go, baby. Look at those flowing blonde locks. He says, hey, hold my whip, hold my whip. All right, but seriously, this is gonna be an absolute battle of attrition with Rob. Uh, having his own means to uh, combat at range. Ooh, especially with all that fuel-based recovery. Let's see what happens over here. Oh, nice up B from ledge. Cool option. Hits him with the whip and tries to zone with a couple of axes here. Oh my goodness, and he grabs the ledge jump with an up smash there, taking that kill way earlier than I would have thought he would. Rob's a heavy boy, he's made of metal. So uh, yeah, you know. Not always you're gonna see him flying off that early. Trying to turn around this gyro situation, make it work for himself over here, say, let me just add this to my inventory. Suddenly Shake Zula here. 
Getting a couple conversions. He's uh he's chasing with these dash attacks. There goes the big laser and it connects. Flying right through the cross. Oh, he's got the gyro in his hand. Throws it right down. Another cross. Hits the shield. Another whip. Hits the shield. Another grab. Doesn't matter if it hits the shield, because it's a grab! <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I can't even keep up with what these guys are doing right now. Shakezilla gets the little little down throw into up up air, but uh 132 is not gonna be enough to kill, but 145 is gonna be! Absolutely beautiful. And now both players on to uh, two stocks remaining. Shakezula all the way up to 100% though. With Darkholm not even having a scratch on him yet. No joke, at the grocery store I saw Shakezula's doppelganger. I've seen someone that looked a lot like him in the past too. I wonder if we saw the same person. Or is this just a joke because uh, in his distant past, Shakezula worked at the grocery store. It's actually where I met him. A little bit, of, little, little, little bit for you guys there. Go add that to my Wikipedia page which doesn't exist. Also add my Wikipedia page to my Wikipedia page, thanks. All right, Sheikh Zula all the way up at 130%, but still living. This was that heavy robot I was talking about from before. Up throw, let's see if he can get the up air chase onto it. No punish, no juggle. Uh, Sheikh Zula navigates his way safely to the edge and to the ground, sets up a reverse edge guard situation and catches him with the side B. I told you guys last week, how much he loves that side B as a kill option, and he secured probably 90% of his kills with that. Absolutely ridiculous. Thank you, Zeal Jake. <laughs> Wikipedia page. Let's go, Nightbot. Get to work. All right, cute little Nair. Uh, both these players at approaching kill percent. I say approaching. Shake has been there for ages, rather. Dark home approaching kill percent, and uh, the game suddenly looking pretty even, although Shake has been at a big percent deficit. As, he, as long as you live to 180, it doesn't matter what kind of percent deficit you're at. If you live to 180, what does percent matter at all? <laughs> like, jeez, man, this guy. Okay, let's see if Shake Zula can find his kill confirm. Send this into a last stock situation. Oh, taking a whip to the face for 12. Taking a cross to the face for math is failing me. Nine, nine point something. I'm not doing decimals. You guys can do decimals. Oh, down throw into up air. Down throw into up smash. He's not playing around now. Darkholm leaning back in his seat on that one. Not sure whether he's, oh, hoo -hoo, that is a high hitbox. Oh boy. Sometimes. Sometimes it just takes the tip. Sometimes. These guys are pulling out moves I didn't even know about. You know what? Study up. Get out your notebook. Uh, there will be no quiz. Marth 2, now with projectiles. Speaking of Marth, look at my boy over here. I forgot to mention my partner on commentary tonight. There he is. Mita, it is great. I love that boy. All right, going into game three. Sorry, game two. My bad. Let's update the scoreboard over here. Dark home able to take game one with that spicy nice up air. Going into game two. Yeah, pretty similar start again with Dark home having the uh, initial momentum. Dodges that axe. Dodging it with the flight path of the axe, but still avoiding it over here. Trying to fight the projectile war a little bit. Not sure if it's going to work out for him. I know that uh, Simon and Richter have very strong projectiles being able to travel through and beat out many other projectiles in the game. Uh, so it looks like Shakezilla in general just trying to, to, kind of trying to take the fight to him. Getting that down smash, getting those dash attacks and whatnot. I mean, he's still trying to work with the lasers and the gyro. Um, I, I legitimately do not have enough knowledge about... Um, about the projectiles to know whether or not that's necessarily a good idea, but looks like Darkholm can hold his own in close combat encounters as well, and he grabs the kill off of that up B. Such a spicy animation. I love seeing kills coming off those up Bs. They're just fun to watch. All right, Sheikh Zula still 72% on the board, so not at a huge deficit just yet if he can find this kill here within the next moment. Um, he's still managed not to take any damage somehow. He's got him in an offstage situation. Snipe with the gyro and nothing else is gonna matter. Gets that kill with no percent on the board. No commentary curse in sight. Sheikh Zula fulfills the prophecy and then just gets 
right back on that 35% train. All right, let's keep some of that momentum going, Shakezula. Got to get that, got to get that next stock. You know what? He's he's done really well at fighting from behind, living to 180%, finding that snipe with the gyro to to even up the stocks. But um, seems in that seems that if from that tied score or from that leading vantage that um, he hasn't been able to have his momentum this time round. Welcome in, A subscribing with Twitch Prime. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the view. Thanks for the sub. Thanks for the uh, the, the 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 friendly banter, calling us nerds. Ha! Oh, you're so endearing. Welcome in. Hope you be, hope you can pick up some some fun stuff off of the smash here. Big up smash. Talking about smash. Shakespeare is out of there. And uh, onto his last stock now. So let's see if he can't uh, find a way back into this one. Seven more for Shakezula to get an emote. Seven more subscribers, baby. Come on, everybody. Break out those wallets. Ask your parents for Twitch Prime. Cancel your subs to Ninja. We need this emote. All right, nice little nair to start some things off for him, but uh, not just not able to get anything else off of it. Jigzula just struggling to find the, the the chase, struggling to find the conversion. And as I say that, back throw into laser, but the gyro barely misses for what could have been a beautiful kill, taking him onto the last stock situation. But you know what, man, that's that's hard to ask for. Snipes that top out of the sky, and says, "Hey, that's mine. I'm not done with it. Have it again. Here you go, since you want it so bad." Throwing out some back airs. Shakespeare is looking for this kill now. Trying to set up those offstage situations. Oh, the side B. I told you that is the kill move. But Darkholm able to recover really high there with a jumping jump from ledge right over the top. Looking like he's got Shakespeare on the ropes. But if this robot lives to another 180%, he can still be in it. Oh, but he's out of it. All right. Darkholm takes the set. 2-0. Don't mess with a man that wears a, that, that rocks a center part. Don't do that. Don't do that. Ace is gifting five tier one subs. Oh, thanks for subscribing, Bob Smith the Legend, Ice King, Reaper, Dark, Twicklebot. <laughs> Twicklebot. Twicklebot. Where's my subscription? Twicklebot. Not like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ace gives the sub to Evansville Esports Community six in total, legit cipher as well. There you go, that's fifteen. Congratulations, big round of applause. There's your seven. Twinkle bot. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Look at those emotes coming out from everybody. I'm getting hot. I'm getting actually hot. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go EE. -E. All right. Get that approved, baby. Get that uh get that get that in there. Get that get that up for uh for review. I want to see that face on the pretty stream by next FNF. F. Is it a thing now? Is two emotes live? Todd was telling me all about how um Affiliated uh, channels are getting more emote slots at certain sub point markers. The first one being 15. But, anyways, we've got a game to get back into, get those scoreboards up and commentate on it. So, let's see who's up. It's an Isabel player. You already know it's gonna be Papa Peace. All right. Papa Peace versus is who? Who is the mystery player to his side? It's gonna be Geo. All right, this is sure to be a good match and the one that we've seen on the channel before recently in fact Papa Peace and Geo going toe-to-toe -to -toe in last week's FNF, but these, these you know these good players these high-seeded players You're gonna see a match up a time or two so uh, on Lucina this time different because he ran it with Roy last time They took it to a five-game set Roy versus um, Isabel so this time on Lucina, obviously still a pretty similar matchup, but he's uh, going to be more consistent here and allow himself to space um, a little bit differently, a little bit further. 
and have option ha have access to a couple of different tools. Still, you know, a, a largely similar matchup, but um, with some nuanced differences. Looks like uh, Papa Peace able to take the first stock. Rocking that 89% and saying, I will have no more. I'm just going to hang out over here with my slingshot, my pom-poms, and my party poppers. If you want any, let me know. Oh, Ace. You're a dream. What did I ever do to deserve you? Oh, what did Lucina ever do to deserve that fishing hook? This man cannot get another hit. He is still on 89%, and he has taken Geo all the way up to 96 and a kill. He did not get touched on that stock. Oh, my lord. This man. This man has a way of just finding his way inside your soul. It's those puppy eyes. Don't fall for him. Don't let him do this to you. Don't let him do this to you. Fire back. Hit him with something. There you go. Even if it's just the feet. Hit him with something. All right. Geo fires back and takes the stock. Pop a piece at a solid one stock lead right now, though. Man, I, I love Animal Crossing soundtrack. I gotta catch myself whenever I'm just over here literally mimicking soundtrack, and I'm like, you know what? It sounds better to them if you let the game play it, but uh, I love Animal Crossing soundtrack. I wonder if Papa Peace loves Animal Crossing soundtrack. I mean, he plays Isabel so dang much. Oh my goodness, a stage spike coming off of the Dolphin Slash, and you really gotta be careful when you're reaching out there with your turnips. You gotta be careful when you're going out there on these edge guard situations that it doesn't get reversed on you quickly like that. Last stock situation, um, Geo had a very high percent, but, you know, he can always hold on to his stock here. Let's see what Papa Peace goes for to close out the set. Maybe a back throw, maybe a nice little party popper. Who knows what he's going to give him. Avoiding the edge of the blade right there. And Geo's just, he's bringing this back one, one, you know, small hit at a time right here. Found his way all the way up to 85% on onto Papa Peace, and it, it's looking pretty even at this point. 100% from that one little tick out in the uh, outside of the the stage zone. A fishing hook upwards is gonna be, I have to imagine, just enough for that star KO. That one looked like it was gonna be pretty close, but uh, it wasn't Roy. So uh, we we all live another day. Papa Peace takes game one with the is a dab. <laughs> I, w I wouldn't be surprised if Isabel dab, dab on them haters. I mean, she wears Gucci. People who wear Gucci probably dab, right? I don't know. Isabel! Looks like Gio's still confident to rock Lucina, which uh, actually doesn't surprise me. With, with him taking four or five games straight on Roy last week, that he would... Uh, that he would stick to Lucina as well right now. Lucina! Cena! All right, Geo finding a much more comfortable start for himself here with Papa Peace on 80% in less than 20 seconds. But Papa Peace is firing back with the aerials. Snap, snap. Their names are Infowars and Let Me In. <laughs> let me in. <laughs> just had to, just had, just had to take a moment to realize that. Looks like Geo suddenly just he he took some time to download. I don't know, like he went out, went out, got on Starbucks Wi-Fi and downloaded Papa Peace in between rounds here. I, I'm not really sure. Just kidding. EE -E has way better download than you could get at any other free Wi-Fi spot so he doesn't need to go anywhere did you see that plug that I did right there yeah that's right we rep the venue here welcome in Gandalf welcome in how to flan welcome in how to wadu it's good mark can uh, nightbot nightbot can you get on that nightbot I'm gonna need a ban on the uh, the Lucina fan over here yeah just gonna need that to that to happen some point and uh, somehow, Papa Peace holds on to 0% all the way throughout that. They just resetting over here. Look, guys, we're playing Smash 4. We got two stocks. 0%. Ha 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 ha. Here, have this broom. 
Let me let me smack your bottom. These guys just trading back and forth, looking really even still. Both of them at 30%. And uh, it's nobody's game. It looked like Geo had a really strong start there, getting pop a piece up to up to 40 or 60, 80 before he was much contested. But um, they've evened it out since then. Geo nudging out another small lead for himself here, but um, these players just trading back and forth so so safely. I I, I want to say. Papa Peace with a nice little down throw into the forward air on the platform there. Oh, and li looking like a sniper here with these fastballs. Just so hard for Geo to approach with the with the falling forward airs. And as I say that, Papa Peace throws out unsafe fishing rod. Geo says, I'm gonna have none of that. Block, dash, forward, smash. So good. So good. This doggo, yeah, Papa Peace sure knows how to move. He absolutely does. Tell him Isabel's low tier. Tell him. He knows. He doesn't care. He says I'm moving. Papa Peace was able to take second place in last week's FNF. Let's see if he's able to repeat a similar situation and move on past Geo here. Or if Geo's gonna keep this handy lead and take it to a game three. Full stock lead for Geo. Just looking for that last hit to close it out and take him to a game three. Oh, we're going for the little poke, little down tilt off stage. Papa Peace, so good with the cross ups, just getting center stage to uh, avert being edge guarded and uh, use that extra distance to get launched across stage and live. But not this time. Another fishing rod on shield. Looked like Papa Peace was kind of reaching right there, just. Not really sure what to do while he's getting hunted, getting chased down. My dog mom over here. All right, Geo takes game two. And we're taking it to the full extent of the best of three. Let's see what's gonna happen. Last time, Papa Peace came from a, a low tier run, or sorry, a loser's tier run, <laughs> low tier. He came from a loser's tier run where he won five or six straight matches in order to get back into grand finals from loser's side and reset the bracket before finally being bested by Trivium. So uh, even if he is locked, knocked into losers from this point, I'm sure it's not the last that we'll see of him. I know Geo would like to keep his comfy top side, win a side run over here. So... Uh, Let's let the let's let the players do the talking over here. Looks like Geo's off to the to the better start again, similar to last match. Let's see if this time he's able to hold on to it. Oh, a big forward smash. Hitting at the hilt, but it doesn't matter because you're not playing Marth. Chasing him right across the stage, giving him no room to breathe, immediately back up on that edge guard situation again. Another forward tilt once again crosses over to the other side of the stage. Uh out of shield. With the Dolphin Slash, but just the wrong facing there. Looking like he really is trying to reach for that kill now. Throwing out those forward smashes, and there it is, a strong back air. A little cross up on the back air, and he gets the kill. Only 70% on the board, and if he can keep it low while managing to find some damage, he might itch out the lead that he needs to secure this game. Good little down tilt at the edge there. Oh, he's going forward a lot, and he's getting things off of it. It's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good so far. Of course, I say that, and for all the hits that he's got, it's only at a 23%. I guess those down tilts, they, uh, you know, they don't necessarily add up to much. But, uh, you know what? It's something. A cool little up air off the stage here. Geo not afraid to go out there and get those percents where he can find them. All the way up to 130%. Papa Peace looking for any kill option right now. 144 and doesn't quite kill off the top, but those turnips will. That was actually a really similar to percent to whenever he was able to get that up throw kill in the first game. So uh, not sure if Lilat having a higher blast zone or if uh, just uh, slightly off by percents there. Any of you uh, techies out there on blast zones can feel free to let me know. But um, it had to have been pretty close regardless. Either way, second life situation over here and a 50% lead for Geo. He's been able to hold on to and retain the lead that he established himself from the beginning throughout all of this, so uh, good job to him for consistency's sake. And these guys, that close range battle, you may tell me that swords beat hammers, right? You may have played Fire Emblem and know everything about that effectiveness triangle, but what I'm telling you is this dog is beating this sword fighter with a squeaky hammer. 
A squeaky hammer. Last stock situation. Geo versus Papa Peace. Game three. Let's see where they take us. Oh my god, the squeaky hammer. Oh my god, the squeaky hammer. Jabs. Jabs. They trade in jabs. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's what's going on over here. Isabel all the way up to 80%. And looks like Geo, uh, Geo won that one. He's saying, all right, the sword, the sword is mightier. Put down your weapon, little dog. Forward smash. Another one of those. And Papa Peace is sayonara. Unless he crosses him up and gets launched across the stage. One thing that Papa Peace has been phenomenal at. Crossing him up to ensure he has the full width of the stage to fly across whenever he does land those big hits. Mm. Forward finisher of Dolphin Slash. Still not going to be enough. Once again, cross stage and slightly less launch distance than the forward smash. Papa Peace is living. Let's see what happens. Oh, is he going to make the big comeback? Up to 60. He's got a lot of work to put in if he wants it, but not gonna happen today. Geo with the falling up air. Really unique option off of the platform there on Lilat being pretty low. And an angled stage. He had less distance to fall than he would have on a lot of other places. And uh, Geo's able to knock Papa Peace into the loser's bracket. Like I said, though, assuredly not the last that we'll see of him off of that. This man's made big loser's brackets runbacks from before. Either way, a really fun, really fun one to watch. Where is reading Fifty Shades of Grey is Morgan Freeman. What you're meaning to tell me is that Morgan Freeman is reading Fifty Shades of Grey. That's what I'm hearing. Intense match, assuredly, between these guys. And, uh, if possible, I'm going to call for a commentary break because uh, I've been chugging through this water. So, uh, give me just a second, see if I can't get a, a little stand-in over here on the scoreboard for you guys. And we'll come back to whatever the heck match is coming up next. Um, looks like it might be, a Prattle and Trivium? Is that what I'm seeing over here? No. Is this Mammoth guy? I don't know who we're looking at. We're looking at... Oh, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Norse, PB. Yeetus. Yeetus with the money. Mammoth guy. Stardust Mammoth guy. Okay, we're going to get them up on the scoreboard for you guys, and we'll come back and see what the heck's happening in a minute. Yeah. Like a uh, one minute break, is what I was thinking. That type of break. Man, I've been over here hitting the Hydrate bot. Let's get our players on deck, though. There we go. All right, see y'all lovelies in a second.
Oh, thank you for that. Alright, now that we're on the uh, appropriate round... Welcome back to me. How have we been doing while we were away? We've got Wolf and Crom up in game right now. Mammoth Guy versus Stardust. Still on game one, but we're down to our last stock situation. Looks like Stardust has a, a slight deficit here. Mammoth Guy's still performing smoothly since we saw him way back in round one. Steve Bash and Steve Irwin, how could you do that? Not my boy. Is this wolf uh, tickling your fancy? Doing some things for you over here. Looks like despite being at a 70% deficit, whenever I rejoined, he's able to take game one. I thought for sure that was gonna be an up B spike, but no, it wasn't an up B spike, it was a furry spike. Oh, Wolfgang, yeah, Wolf Wolfgang Fist. Let's go. Let's go, Stardust. Let's go. Oh, oh. All right, Battlefield Game 2. Rest in peace. Stop spamming emotes. Tisk tisk. You know that four emotes is excessive. It's just, whew, they piling up. Bear with us as we get these Nightbot quirks worked out. You know, you know how it be. We'll get there. All right, we see a swap on K rule. Big decision over here. Just buries this man at 0%. All right. K. Rule coming in with a big punch. Oh, and he calls him out with the crown onto the forward B there. That was a pretty cool timing. Charges his move for a bit longer than he's welcome to there. And uh, Mammoth Guy works his way around with the dodge. Setting himself up an edge guarding situation here, but it's reversed on him how quickly the tables turn. Yes, enter my blunderbuss and hold my crown and cannonball while you're at it. This man is sniping. Oh my lord, that is like five for five hits. I was about to say, Sardis feet gonna ever touch the ground again? I am surprised none of that killed, though. Good lord. Stardust manages to take the first kill after all of that. And Mammoth Guy fires back. Talk about firing back. He says, here, have your stinking cannonball. I don't want it. Oh, nice little combo from Stardust there. Racking up those percents. That gator's all the way on 82. He's a croc, right? I don't know why I keep calling him a gator over here. Time to spam. But you know what? If it hurts, it works, right? Hanging out over here on the platform, saying this is my safe space. Can't touch me when I'm here. Stardust looking for a cute little two frame over there. But regardless, he's got other he's got other edge garden options. Hits him with the grab, and oh my goodness, looks like he's he uh thought too long you know whenever I used to go and, and take tests back when I was a test taking young lad my father would tell me think long think wrong maybe you guys can put that to use whenever you're out there thinking about your edge options while you're recovering he's getting a lot of mileage out of these forward tilts throwing out those claws Stardust is uh, up a stock right now looking to close it out with a big juggle not quite high enough. <laughs> For a quarter second there, I actually thought that K. Roll might have been in a Star KO animation, and I was like, he still looks pretty big. He still, I'm not sure about that. Gonna be a, an uphill battle for Mammoth Guy to uh, bring this one back now. But hits on the, the returning hit of the crown, a little bit slow on the dash attack, and they're off to the other side of the stage. Throws himself off and he hits the cannonball again. The snipes from Mammoth Guy have just been on point. This guy is aimbotting. He's too good. 
but he's not good enough to avoid the up air. Meets a swift demise, the top blast zone. The match goes to Stardust, 2-0. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Where are we gonna end up now? He deserved that for playing King K. We got some we got some biases over here in the chat now. I don't wanna see y'all hating on people's character picks now. Now be nice. Be nice to the King K rule players now. But don't be nice to the Lucina players. Tell them to pick Marth. Get a life, nerds. Alright, what's gonna be the up next on the stream? Looks like we still got uh, Triv and Prattle potentially sometime soon. The hoodie is off. Yeah, things are getting real. We got Vi from Piltover representing over here. Gray on gray. It was getting a bit warm. I was getting a bit toasty, you know, these matches after a while. They start to, things start to heat up. We've seen an X Marth. Hey! That's wrong! Got some people looking at stage picks over here. I wonder who it is we've got. I really need to get better at knowing exactly who's up next. I think it's Triven Prattle, but that's the only option it could be. What am I talking about? It's gotta be Triven Prattle. <laughs> Morph! Morph! Yeah, the announcer's got, um, you know, he's got a way that he says things. Lucina! Duck! Hunt! Is there even any difference between Marth and Lucina in Fire Emblem? Depends on which game you're talking about. But let's go live, because we're talking about this game right now! We got Prattle versus Trivium, and Prattle is on... The Falco prob, yep, because Gemini is the tag for Trivium. Let's swap these boys around and get into it. It's like one of these guys has to be on Bowser. I don't understand. All right, either way, I like it because Bowser's fun to watch. Let's go. Regrabs. We got regrabs. We got grabs on grabs on grabs. Bowser's getting handsy over here. Say Bowser. Save it for the princess. I was talking about handsy. Now he's playing footsies. Says, hey, catch these feet. Oh my lord. Oh my lord, that was a fast stock. Less than 30 seconds in, and uh, Trivium takes the first stock, sets himself up another edge guard situation. Nair into forward air, into fire breath. Looking good. Parry's on the lasers, parry's on the blue lines. Oh, going for a read on the uh, high recovery of the side B. Clips the side B again, clips the side B again. Woo! I thought he was gonna sit on him right there. Trivium is just absolutely moving on Bowser over here right now. Forced into a really high recovery by some edge guarding from Prattle, though. Let's see if Prattle can get his feet underneath him in this. Oh, that was looking good! Trying to catch that roll in with the forward smash. Didn't quite connect, but his aerial afterwards did. And just to take his stock, but it's, uh, whew, getting hit by them claws. You don't want to get hit by any charge smash attack from Bowser. You don't get hit by a charge smash attack from anybody. Nonetheless, Bowser. That's not, a, that's not gonna feel good, man. All right, getting those grabs into the juggles. I like it. Trivium is just moving on Bowser. There is no idle time for this man. Like, he is putting out hitboxes. This is, this is nice. All right, all right. Prattle trying to keep himself in this game right now, but that back air launched so far from only 60%. Hey, charge all day. Charge all day, Trivium, let's go. All right, Prattle once again puts him out. Says here. Hold his laser. Oh my gosh! Trivium says, hold my hands. You can mash out, but it doesn't matter when you're that low. Who do you think you're playing, Rob? You're not coming back. That was so good. Just grabbed him right there off the ledge. So cute, just with the mix-ups, man. Who's gonna expect that? Who's gonna expect that? Come here, Falco. You can fly. All right, going into game two. 
And it looks like we're running it back. Still on Bowser, still on Falco, still on a horrible stage to look at. I'm just kidding. Ah, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just bandering. Ha, 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 ha. Let's go. What's this stage called? Uh, floaty, doodongly, little pink tadpole guys. What is it called? Oh, my God. Um, I don't remember. Somebody will tell me. Anyways, prattle off to a, to a flying start right over here. A soaring start, I, I could even say. Quick 70%. And oh, my Lord, every hit of the up B connects into a stage spike. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Why well, pick the stage with no music? I don't know, man. We can make our own music over here. Except for if we do, we're gonna get copyright strike because this golden voice is gonna hit all the right notes. Those 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 bots are gonna come in and copyright strike us. Electroplankton? There's no way that's the actual name of the stage. <laughs> Electro shrimp. Let's go. Electro krill. Oh, and the self destruct coming out from Trivium. I swear, I take my eyes off this game for one second and look what the players do. They start coming out here killing themselves. Like, I'm not going to catch it. Like, say, there's over here saying, hey, pay attention to us. We're SDing and things. Hand and bow. There you go. There you go. You got it. It is a very peculiar stage. They green the background. I feel like this is just an excuse to be able to insert anything you want into the background of your match. Oh my goodness, these guys are just going left side of stage to right. Let's see if Trivium can find the kill right here and even up the stocks. Despite the SD, they're going into a last stock situation. Prattle's going to have to dig deep and fight hard if he wants to remain on winner's side for this one. He's been having a hard time with his tough turtle. But, uh, you know, this is a nice little juggle combo starting off with the, the, the up tilts into the aerials. He's got him off stage now. Hey, he decides, you know what, I better work my way back. He's reaching out pretty far for that one, and if he, he it got reversed on him, it would have been a messy situation. Oh, big charged up smash. Managed just to catch the roll in, even from behind right there. Trivium just knowing those hitboxes so well. Speaking of knowing hitboxes well, connects the forward air, and that's it. Trivium takes the game 2-0. Moves on. Prattle being sent to losers. But of course, it's not the end of everything for him. That puts Prattle into a match with Tasty John, who we have not seen on stream yet. Not yet. Not this week. Not this week. We got to see him quite a couple of times last week. Last week with the, the smaller attendance due to uh, inclement weather. I think we saw Tasty John on stream maybe three times? I don't even remember. Playing uh, Cloud? Was it? Cloud, I think. I think he's a Cloud player. I'm trying. I'm trying to learn my boys over here. I'm trying to trying to learn my boys. Speaking of my boys, who is this mammoth we got on screen right now? What is this match? What is this match? Where's this match at? Geo? Geo and Stardust. Okay, this is Geo and Stardust. I got it. I'm doing it, Mom. We're doing it live. Gio and Stardust, winner's quarters finals. Let's see what's up. Oh, sorry. Winner's semi finals. My bad. Winner's semi. Winner's semi. I got this. All right. Gio on Lucina versus Stardust on. Ike, ooh, sword fight. Let's see what happens here. I would say that I'm gonna keep my mouth shut because I don't know enough about this to say anything. Uh, but what I do know to say is that these guys are trading literal blow for blow. This is so close right now. Oh, and there it is, the conversion. He just secures that kill. Looking like he was getting bullied there for a minute and then just comes back in with that kill. It's such a close matchup on these two. Uh, Marth and Lucina having a little bit less ending lag and a little bit uh, less startup lag as well. But, you know, Ike generally 
generally hitting for harder percents and killing earlier, it's going to be really close. I feel like with the recovery benefit going to Lucina on the Dolphin Slash, having the better recovery, that um, Geo might be favored to edge this one out based on character pick alone, but I'm not going to talk too much about that because, once again, a little bit above my head. Lucina has a bigger sword than I... Hang on, hang on. I think you got something confused over here. Players on their second stock over here, and they are just firing back and forth, making full use of these platforms, trying to extend these combos as well. Uh, awkward little situation here. Geo uh, opts not to try and throw out the, the counter or anything like that. Just jumps out of shield to, to get to safety. Stardust going for a little cross up here and throwing out some aerials, but Geo's not having any of it. Just staying safe in shield. Uh, cancels the dancing blade earlier into a into a spot dodge. <laughs> These guys back just literal 97 to 100, 100 to 109, like just absolutely so even. A little bit far away on the spacing for the counter, not able to connect. Oh, and there it is, the conversion into the up air again. Big sword. <laughs> just biding his time. Is he just standing there on the left side of stage, menacingly? Nice little getup attack. It looks like Stardust is really pacing himself, trying to trying to land his hits with precision here and uh, just get all the mileage you can out of this stock. You saw him go really high over the top with that last side B, Geo opting for the counter but missing. That time he navigated his way to the side of stage, trying to mix up his recovery, but despite Geo is able to find himself that kill, looking for a combo starter off of these up tilts, but not able to continue anything off of them. Both players just going blow for blow here and a really big hit thrown out by Stardust with the forward smash, but not able to connect that. Such a close game between these two. Once again, barely any more than 10% difference between them at any point. 100% now I say that and suddenly the percent lead has been doubled for Stardust. Let's see if he's able to close this game out for the, the game one running start. Or if Geo's going to inch his way back in here, it's still not that very big difference. He's got to watch out for that combo potential into Ike's up air though. Got to get those nair up airs. Hmm. And there it is, the up air that won the game. Oh, with a confident dash off of the stage. Not sure if he had already, he must have good reaction time. I was going to say, I, I, it hadn't even registered in my brain that, that Lucina was dead by the time that he was dashing off the stage right there. This madman, it's like getting that, getting that critical zoom and then fast falling to your death, realizing that they didn't actually die. Like, yikes. Yay, yay, yay. Why is Ike better than Marth? Well, let's see. Uh, he fights for his friend? No. Mm, he's prettier? No. Mm, he's more agile? No. Mm, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go with he's not. Doesn't have a comfort blanket. Looks like Geo's switching it up now, giving the sword battle to Stardust and saying, Hey, I'll trade my sword out for a, for a paintbrush. You know what they say, the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> Let's go, get ink, baby. Uh, but as I say that, Stardust fires back with 32% in three hits. So fast. Pretty even percents over here. Trying not to give Geo much of any room. Stardust is one to chase him down right now. Oh, nice nares, one into another. And then the back air, man, just creating so much distance, trying to zone him out with the up air right there and the, the kill potential from that. Ends up clipping him with the back air instead as he's off stage over here. Geo trying to keep this man off stage with every tool he has. You saw the splat bomb, you saw the down smash, but uh, Stardust just able to continually navigate his way back into stage over here, shielding the rollers. Roller is a really good move, you know, if you get hit by it, but obviously just being able to have the simple option of shielding it, if you're able to react to it every time, 
Roller suddenly becomes a lot less of a threat. Splat Bomb hangs on the upper platform. Meanwhile, Stardust hangs on to the upper percentages. 112, and this man is refusing to die right now. He's really good at just slowing the game down whenever he gets to these higher percents. He just hangs on to them. Hasn't managed to establish himself much of a percent lead with Geo still only on 19%, but you can really tell how the game slows down whenever he's at these percent deficits trying to hang on to that stock. You're a kid. You're a squid. <laughs> he was a kid. He was a squid. Now he was a killer. Ling does everything. And both of these players literally 0.1% apart from each other for a moment there. Just keeping these games, these stocks in these games so even. Marth didn't get any of Daddy Sakurai's love. You know what? I'll give him more love for it. It's okay. It all comes out in a wash. I love him forever. But Marth's not in this game. Not right now, at least. Ike over here, repping the blue, kind of looking like Marth. Just give him that red, that red cape interior. Might have fooled me. I have the high ground, Inkling! Don't do it, Inkling! I have the high ground! <laughs> I'm just so amused by how long Stardust was content to hang out on the high platform. <laughs> Both of these guys just so close right now, and there it is! The big back air. Grabs himself a kill. Let's see if Geo can't manage to take this stock and get them into a uh, last stock situation. Oh, I'm sorry, and I was uh, I was unable to update the scoreboard for you guys as well. Stardust was able to take that first game and shove Geo off of his uh, off of his sword fighter pick. It wouldn't have fooled me. No, it wouldn't. Have. You can't. You can't ruse me with that mask, Lucina. You're not Marth. You mask swordsman masquerading as the hero king. Get out of here. You're just a girl. Speaking of get out of here. Geo really wants to get this stock right now. Stardust is all the way up to 150%. I'm telling you guys, he just slows this game down so much. He just plays it so methodically. Takes his time and hangs onto these stocks, and Geo says, Enough! Big forward smash. No setup. Sometimes you just gotta put it out there, and if it hits, it hits! So what for it? Down throw into up air, still able to connect even at 60%. Oh, another down throw. Not able to connect that one into anything. Geo, trying to take some time to think over here on the ledge. Think about what you've done. Really getting pressured right now if he doesn't want to get knocked into the loser side. Oh, another back air has him far off the stage. Using that low recovery, but the down tilt grabs him out of his recovery there. Right into the up air, really good there. Reaching for everything that he can have. Stardust, not letting anything go to waste. That was really spicy being able to take that right there. That feels good whenever that connects. Sometimes you gotta wonder, because the players put those types of things out a lot, where they, they throw out those, those down airs of the ledge and things, looking for two frames and looking to catch people like that. Uh, sometimes I wonder how they're ready to react whenever they do hit like that because there's so many that get thrown out there just to whiff, just, just, just not to land. So it's, you know what? Good on you for being on your toes and being able to catch that regardless. Is Nightbot behaving yet? You know what? I don't see any bans in, uh, within eye shot. I also don't see any, uh, inappropriate behavior within eye shot other than the, uh, you know, the, the Lucina fandom and um, lack of Marth support. So, there's that. All right, what are we getting into next? Trivium and Darkholm, I believe, is gonna be the game to see. Bowser, and if, if that doesn't secure it in my mind, nothing else will. Bowser. <laughs> Yo! We got a game on deck! Let's go! Ganondorf, baby! Get me in! Get me in! Alright! Ganondorf and Bowser, once again! The hard hitters! Oh boy! Oh boy, oh boy! You know I love to see this. Alright, moving on! Winner semifinal, other side, other players here, trading down there for up tilt. Not a good trade for you, Bowser! But not a good start for Ganondorf. 
already up to 95%. Come on, show him you're the king of evil. What is he? The king of turtles and mushrooms? You're the king of evil! 80% deficit for Dark Home over here. 0% uh, deficit for Dark Home. Look, he's got 0% on him. And it's because he died. Let's see what he can fire back with. Nair, throw, up air, hit him with a stamp. Uh oh. Yep, just quick with the grab and the turnaround on that one. Got him in another ledge pressure situation, just throwing so many things at that ledge. What did that ledge ever do to you, Trivium? Jeez. Ah, uh, send up another edge guard situation. Oh, an amazing tech. So notoriously easy to edge guard Ganondorf, what with his super predictable recovery path. Going really low and actually getting scooped up by Trivium and saved right there. Say thank you. Say thank you to Mr. Bowser. Oh, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see the jump into Flame Choke off ledge. Such a cool option. Almost killing him off the top there, but Bowser heavy enough to live. A nice parry, and they trade tilts. But the Spartan Kick is not enough. Oh, but the crowd believes. Ganondorf. Crowd chance for Ganondorf. Can you get one stock for us? Let's see it. Big back air. Not as big a smash four, but it's still there. All right, we got a kill on the board for Dark Home. Let's see what comes of the rest of this match. Trying to engage with a little bit of command grab over here. Bowser says, hey, let me show you, let me show you a grab of my own. How about you catch these claws? Nice falling forward air. A lot of damage there, even if it's just a clip. What's he going to follow it up with? Follows it up in a dash attack, looking for the roll in. A pretty common option, what with them being pretty close to the stage there, wanting to grab center stage. Oh, there's the first time we've seen the sword this match. Maybe a little bit of a little bit more sword play could have helped out. Nice! Hits him with the wizard's foot. Landing hitbox. Oh, and he goes for the jump flame choke again, but this time he's met with a spiky shell. Yikes. Dr. Seuss up in here with the rhymes, baby. With the rhymes. Alright. I'm gonna imagine after that. After that. We may not be seeing the dwarf again for the moment, but who's to say? Looks like we do, however, get to see Dracula's Castle. Didn't see the soundtrack that they picked, but uh, you know it can't be a bad one if it's coming from Castlevania. The Punch. He should have gave him more. He should have gave him more of The Punch. You know what? Either way, I appreciate the Ganondorf rep. Good game, bad game, it's a game of Ganondorf. Let's go. Trivium takes the first game, moving on into round two. Dark home on Ike this time. Nice little jab combo, but he misses the grab follow up. Trivium says, let me show you how it's done. Can we get it into a forward air? I thought it was gonna be an air, but forward air this time. Oh my goodness, waits it out and goes for that big forward smash. Looking for a really early kill. Nice tip of the blade, tip of the blade. Doesn't get you any damage, but you know what? Bonus points for safe spacing. Oh my goodness, just racking up so much damage so fast on this turtle. Looking for some aerials. Trying to mix up his approach, waiting for Darkholm to jump over, cross him up, coming with an aerial there, but no read on the up smash. Suddenly, Darkholm's the one with an edge guard situation forward air get off my stage charge an aether it's gonna connect but it is not gonna kill that is one heavy turtle that's all that shell armor but that soft underbelly gets hit by the up air and you're out of there the punch is the forward air more specifically the air forward <laughs> Getting cut short. So Ike says, let me finish. Let me finish. Once again, these Ike players over here slowing down the game and holding on to these percents. Maybe it's just an Ike thing. It seems like Trivium's just really slow to approach suddenly whenever he has the lead. And you know that Darkholm's not going to pressure anything whenever he's got that lead. Oh my goodness. Dodges right in past that sword and says, hey, come give daddy a hug. Taking a second to breathe. Sometimes you need a minute to breathe mid-set. I can respect that. Lord knows I need to breathe mid-set. Man, I get so hyped up whenever I'm out there. 
nice little dash attack. Really big percent lead for Darkholm right now, but uh, some offstage shenanigans over there could change things pretty quickly. <laughs> Trivium taking his turn to try and slow the game down over here. But Darkholm's having none of it. He says, hey, let's keep going. Now a full stock lead in favor of Darkholm. Big turnaround from how the last match went. Trivium over here reaching for some big forward smashes, but uh, Darkholm's not going to let him have it with the hitbox of the, of the sword coming up on those recovery moves. Throw, what's he gonna get it into? The forward air this time, trying to set himself up an edge guard situation. Oh, a down smash covering the roll in option right there. Gets over his head with the cheeky side B, just enough time to charge to get over that fire spout. Nice combo in these aerials together. We gotta remember, Trivium's still at a stock deficit, so he's really gonna have to put in the work if he wants to bring this one back. It's not enough just to take this current stock. Going for the counter on the recovery there, and Trivium, wise enough to wait it out, takes one stock. Let's see if he can work on another one. Making it look like it's a possibility, realistically. Oh, a couple more of those into an up air, though, and it is gonna be impossible. There it is, forward tilt for the kill. That's a different move, haven't seen that one much this set yet. Dark home, taking a game himself. Looking pretty good. Not quite into best of five territory yet, if I'm right this time. I'm getting the hang of it, this uh, double elimination thing. Best of five reserve for loser finals. Just just for finals in general. Losers finals and then winners finals and grands, I believe. So going into game three here, looking like we might see a character swap. Not sure if it's gonna be male or female. Or androgynous. Or amphibious. Or mammalian. And it's the Pokemon Trainer. All right, Trivium onto the Pokemon Trainer. A little bit shook after that last match, maybe. Just wanting to mix it up, maybe. Just wanting to breathe fire with a different lizard, maybe. Or maybe we'll never see the Charizard pick, who knows? Squirtle looking out here to get that quick percent with some clean combos. Pushes him off stage, but it's not enough. I gonna be able to recover. Say, no, you're not getting a cheeky kill. You ain't getting a cheeky kill. Finding that platform to recover on safely. And Trivium makes the swap to Ivysaur. Let's look for those aerial hitboxes. Can he get down? Let me down. All right, works his way to the edge. Pretty safe option, pretty smart play right there. Hard to get down with just that one centralized platform. Not a lot to work with, but you know what? He manages in the end. We see the swap to Charizard just to assist in the recovery. Now he's gonna have to play it out on Charizard or make his way back with two swaps to get onto Ivysaur. He's hanging out at the edge here saying, get me off a of Squirtle. I want to play the plant. And not that plant. Talking about Ivysaur. But he gets quickly comboed into an up air. Not quite able to find his footing after so many rampant Pokemon swaps, it looks like. Maybe they got a bit disoriented coming in and out of the Pokeballs. Either way, he's back to Ivysaur now and he's looking for that kill. 156 on Ike over here. A couple of options from this point that would be able to kill. Now it's just a matter of being able to find him. Throwing out some Razor Leafs and trying to space. This is that good play that I like to see from Ivysaur, and there it is, able to kill off of the forward air. It's really nice to see that from Ivysaurs whenever they just get the Razor Leafs out there, get the aerials out there, make that wall, you know, make it hard for them to come in. Sword characters, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword, ha, uh, uh, pun, whenever you're dealing with projectiles like that. They have a lot of tools to, to kind of gap close and, and rush down and get in there, but, you know, if you can manage to wall them out, can make their life hell. I feel like it goes, I feel like it's a two-way street. The projectile versus sword matchup. But I'm not playing it, I'm just watching it, so let's watch and see what happens. Pokemon Trainer Trivium is all the way up to 112%. Meanwhile, Dark Home sitting comfortably at 30. Big parry on the Flare Blitz! Says, hey, is that move legal? Is there a parry move in Pokemon? There's not really a parry move. You got things like light screen and stuff like that. 
do you have a parry move? You got spite? There's parry moves in Pokemon, right? You can like absorb and like charge up. There's not there's not any like true parry moves that return damage. Though are there? Oh there's um Oh, what is it where you get damaged and then based on that you deal more damage when you fight back? Kind of like Outrage, but not... Oh, I forget what it's called. Anyways, looking back over here at the game. Trivium's on his last stock now. Darkholm, not at the greatest percent lead, though. If Trivium's able to find this kill, he could still be able to bring it back. Oh, a really long range! Oh, and that tether grab! Not sure what happened there at the very end, though. He he got the tether grab with Ivysaur from really far and high, but then just barely got touched off. Wasn't ready for the reaction after that. Super unfortunate, but sometimes that's the way it be. You know what? Water off a duck's back, Trivian. You've got another chance in the loser's run still. Darkholm moves on with a win 2-0 into the winner's final. Sand attack, high jump. Let me tell you about Ganondorf. Ganondorf has his air forward. We call it the punch. It has that special hitbox. Like, now, this is some real technical stuff for you guys who aren't educated about it. It's got that special hitbox like a sword. Hence, it goes right through anything except an attack that has the same type of hitbox. It does 17% max, is relatively fast executing, has basically instant recovery on barrier cancel, and is quite massive, killing at rather low percentages. We call it the punch. All right, what game are we going into now? We've got Stardust and Darkholm if we keep the hot seat. Not sure if we're showing any of the, uh, um, loser's bracket at this point. Gotta go track down some players. Go for it. So get in here, there's matches to be played. I'm not sure who we have on right now, though. Oh, we do have Trivium up. Is, would this be Trivium and Papa Peace coming in? I like it. All right, on to loser side quarterfinals. Looking at your players for some redemptions and another shot at that coveted trophy. Uh, spoiler alert, there's no trophy, but there's still pride in it for winning the tournament. All right, we've got Trivium and Papa Peace. Let me hear it. If you want to see the goddess in green win, Woo! and if you're one to fall for those puppy eyes, make some noise. Ah! Oh, looks like we've got a even match, everybody. Let's see who wins. Woo All right, Papa Peace versus Trivium. Let's go. 102 on the Trivium already. Pulling out the Palutena, he says, no Bowser, no Pokemon trainer. Assuredly, he knows how things would go with this type of matchup, and I'm assuming this is just his most comfortable pick into this sort of projectile play. So, uh, let's see what he can do with it. I mean, these players know their characters, and they know each other pretty well at this point, so let's see what's going to happen. Is Papa Peace going to start another killer loser's run, make his way all the way back up to the finals? Or is Trivium going to get in there and defend his title? Work for it. Launch. All right. I lost myself for a minute there, but uh, looks like these guys are still in an even game. They're on their second stock, trading pretty even, even percentages. Did I hear a guy yell? Probably. Probably. These guys are hooting and hollering all around this place right now. There's only so much you can do with soundproofing, but that's okay. It's that. It's that authentic background. These guys still trading pretty evenly. 
90% on Palutena and up to 100 on the Doggo now. Oh, following up with a second there. If the first one doesn't hit, the second one might. Papa Peach is just so good at moving quick. It seems like every time that he's in the air, there's going to be two or three aerials coming at you, not just one. Oh my goodness! The Hidden Lloyd is the most unexpected. Tribune finds himself a kill, but then finds himself stepping on a booby trap moments later. All right, a few more pellets and you might be at kill percent. You know whenever you're talking about 145 not being kill percent that you're probably playing Isabel or something similar. 151 and Trivium, uh, or Papa Peace is trying to go fishing over here. He's fishing for the kill. Oh, he's feeling this one. I see him jittering in a play cam down there. I see him, he's reaching for it. When he hits that net, he wants that confirmed. Boom! There it is. All right. Gets the kill throw. Only 1% taken, despite how long that seemed to take for him to track down that kill. He uh, didn't end up taking too much during the meantime. Is there any attack that will not kill someone in 999%? There are actually plenty of attacks that won't. There are attacks in this game that have set knockback to where no matter what percent the opponent's at, they always get launched the same distance. There are also attacks weak enough that they just won't kill at 999%. Oh, going for the party popper there, but uh, no guests invited. I love Papa Peace's nature for recovering where he hugs really harshly inside to the stage, disallowing people for those drop-off nares, drop-off back airs, things that especially Palutena is uh, known for, like with her drop-off nares. He hugs really hard under and in the stage. You'll see him hugs the stage, and then a moment later uses the rest of that extended fuel recovery to float back out and grab ledge after his opponent has come off and used whatever sort of edge-guarding option they may have settled on. Warp. Both players on last stock here though, and Trivium reaching so far out for that one, still not quite able to connect it. Papa Peace disallowed from his normal recovery path that you heard me talking about, but manages somehow to find his way to ledge. Both of these players just looking for that killing blow so close right now. Oh goodness sakes, just watching them try to work their way in here. Close range, this could be it! The Nair's not gonna be enough to send him all the way off though. Even when he's at the edge, Papa Peace is just unrelenting with the pellets. Finding his way back on, going for the kill throw, but not quite high enough percent. Edge guarding, goes for a big play on the popper, but not gonna connect. And there hits, and oh my goodness, they are just hitting each other with napkins out here. Somebody throw out a big move, come on. Let's end this game. There it is. Big thigh shot while we're at it, too. Come on, Sakurai. What are you doing? This game's for kids. Look at me. I'm 25 years old. I can't be I can't be exposed to that sort of thing. I don't have the emotional stability to handle that. F. <laughs> are these just Fs for Isabel? Here, Isabel. Hold this L. I hate Sakurai. <laughs> Don't say that. He won't make you another game. Constantly on edge. These games have been pretty clutch, and it looks like... Trivium's over here looking for a clutch swap on the Pokemon Trainer. We've seen him on it just recently, so we know he's warm and ready to go. Let's see what happens. Looking like he's off to a pretty good start so far. He's been able to rack himself up a nice little 50% there. Oh, Razor Leaf into the Nair. Parry in the Palace. Trivium's trying to move. He's saying, look at me pressing buttons, baby. Look at me pressing forward air. Look at me pressing up special. Look at me getting kills. Trivium's looking nice over here right now. Papa Peace is going to have to get his feet on the ground. Saying, hey, I'm not a Pokemon. I'm a, I'm a secretary. I'm not made for fighting, but I'll do what I have to. Oh, good golly. Send him to his grave. Poor dragon's just trying to get back to stage. 
Good lord, Papa Peace. Good lord. All right. Trivia saying, fight somebody your size. I'm playing Squirtle. All the way up to 72%, and he is unrelenting. Still playing on Squirtle right now. Just throwing moves out. Man, he is feeling himself. He is moving right now. On to Ivysaur. Papa Peace with a big mix-up, recovering to right side of stage. A leisure that you are afforded with that type of recovery. And he's got a leaf in his pocket. Watch out for it, ladies and gents. Let's see where it comes out. Oh, I'm waiting for it. I'm watching for it. There it is, the leaf, and it lands, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Papa Peace with the razor leaf. I just, I just get so excited when someone uses pocket. <laughs> it's just it's so silly. All right. And suddenly, looking like it might be a pretty even game. I know Trivium came out of the gates running, sprinting even, but uh, Papa Peace, is he's managing to bring himself back in this. And uh, once again, that Isabel recovery and the way that Papa Peace is able to mix it up with hugging the stages, he's kind of negating Ivasaur's normally dominating down air. Oh, and a big party popper. Just want to make sure you don't get lonely. Just try, to, just try to put a little excitement in your life. Want to have a party? First up smash we've seen from Papa Peace, and uh, he was able to connect with it as well. Trivium over here looking for the kill, thinking maybe Squirtle's the speed that he needs. Not really sure. There he is, swapping on to Ivysaur. This is where the kills are going to be found, if they are to be found. Sets up another offstage situation. Down air, not quite. Rather, he's just waiting for that on stage punish over here, but not gonna be able to make his way back on stage. Papa P says it belongs to me. Quick reversal there, narrowing him out of his out of his recovery. Yikes! Yikes! Noise. That was really clean from Papa P's there. Just to top that match off. Wow, we sends it to game three now. Thinking real hard, thinking long and hard about where they're gonna go on this one. Not certain that Paper Mario is a legal stage, but uh, if it's what they want. All right, Trivium's pulling out the the last page in his book over here. Final boss Bowser on deck. I was thinking that was gonna be a pretty hard matchup, pretty unfavorable. That he wouldn't want to put himself into what with the. Uh, Heavy character getting zoned out by the projectiles, but you know what? If you parry all the projectiles, they don't matter. Trivium is making a statement for Bowser over here. Says, hey, back off of me with that fishing rod. Jeez, this guy, look at him go. Look at him move. Trivium's just not giving him any space to breathe. Just parrying and throwing out these aerials. But uh, Papa Peace, once again, getting his feet underneath him now. Saying, let me in. Let me get some damage, just snapping on that shield. I, I don't even think that you can visibly see the shield chip or the shield damage that the pellets do. Like, they don't reduce the shield any faster than just time passing does. <laughs> That's how little they do. Pop a piece all the way up to 116 and carry to the top corner platinum. Platinum. Platform. Pokemon Platinum. I don't know what I'm thinking over here. It's getting late. Give me a pass, okay? Gosh. Trivium takes the first stock. But <laughs> Pop and Peace fires back! <laughs> Eat your veggies! Was that three turnips? Yikes! Looking like an Ivasaur hitbox over here. Yikes! Trivium! Don't let him do it to you! Not the squeaky toy! Oh, it comes back with the headbutts! <laughs> Turnip for what? Welcome in. What's going on? You coming to join me? Oh my goodness. Yikes. <laughs> All right, both players on two stocks now. And Trivium on one stock now. Guess I shouldn't talk about how many stocks he has, especially if I want to see him uh, manage to work his way back into this game. 
grabs the little dog from down below. <laughs> she's, she's still just spinning though. She's still just spinning. And he's around the other side. You want to take the controls for a minute? I just want to use the keyboard. <laughs> Papa Peace trying to close this one out for himself. A hundred and fifteen all the way up on Isabel. Disgruntled Todd over here. Looking like he's fighting for his tournament life. And he's out the door. He's given up. <laughs> Monka S. Did I actually say that? Don't clip it. Party popper. There it is. Papa Peace takes the W. Sorry, I was I was on autopilot rambling while I was trying not to uh, not to block Todd. It, you, you couldn't see without the without the caster cam being on in here, but he was he was running around trying to get some work done there for for a quarter second. So I was I was distantly spectating the game still. Oh, what, what what's happening? Don't grab the don't grab the dog from down below, unless it's consensual, and she's of age, and she's not an anthropomorphic child's video game chibi character and beloved icon of the innocent gaming community <laughs> pop's gonna give it to you he gonna give it to you solid performance once again i told you don't count him out don't count him out from that loser's bracket run i thought this was a christian channel my christian gaming channel what are you doing to it all right, so Papa Peace moves on, and that's it for Trivium in this tournament, but he'll have his chance again next week. So, we've got Geo and Prattle now, I believe, going to be the next game up on the uh, other players of the Loser Quarterfinal. Winner to face a Papa Peace for another chance back at the championship. I forgot my boy Prattle was still in this. Way to go, my boy Prattle. Way to go. Gotta get my bracket updated too, because this, of course, being loser's quarterfinal. I hear these guys, they just, they go through it so fast. I feel like there's a there's 101 things to do, and I'm just trying to be over here talking the whole time. Oh, they're, they're working on that music select for Smashville. What are they going to go with? So many good options. Hope they go with the, um... Like a 3 a.m. theme, put us all to sleep over here. Me fighters are not banned. But nobody plays them here. Need to get some. Need to get some me brawler. Where's the Peach? I haven't seen Peach in forever. Is Rubika here this week? He's the only one I've even seen play play Peach. He is here. He matched against Shake Zula in round one. Got knocked into losers. And then made a little run for it until he got up to pop a piece in round four. But losers game's not priority on the stream early on, so no peachy here today, no peachy hime. But what we do have is more Simon on stream. Geo versus Prattle on the wrong sides of the screen. Simon versus Wolf. Interesting character picks. Absolutely, I'll say that. Um, loving the Belmont represent right now. Gotta say, I love it. Especially, let's see what Geo can do with it. This should be pretty fun. Oh my goodness, is that what Geo can do with it? Wait a minute. Geo's not on stream. Who is this? Who is this man? What am I watching? Where are we at? This is Stardust? This is Stardust and Darkholm? Why are you throwing me for a loop like this? I got all confident in here. Thinking I knew what I was talking about. I think I knew what I was talking about. And then I looked up at the screen. I looked at the player cam for the first time because I was like, who are these people playing these characters? Since when do these people play these characters? And that's what happened. That's what happens. All right, let's change this back to winner's final so we can get back in the game. One of these days, I'll know what I'm doing. For now, bear with me. And bear with Darkholm on another frustrating Frustrating SD, just not able to reach out and grab that ledge. It's not your game this time, my man. Move on to the next one. Move on to the next one.
Oh, but he hits him with a couple of spicy fires. Not quite able to two frame him with that F smash, although it would have been spicy. Still looking for the kills, though. He's not giving up on this round completely yet. I admire that, willing to play it out. You know what? Some respect for that. Some respect. Oh my goodness. I'm trying to be a sniper with this uh, holy water. Just to, just, just to end up getting it turned around on himself. Trying to set him up a juggle combo. Man, he is not going down easily for this one. I know some people would like to just kind of move along, get the game over with, get it out of their mind to just be able to play the next one, but he's still putting up a strong fight, not willing to let any potential leads go. A lot of pressure on the shields from Stardust there, but uh, Darkholm not taking any damage for it, surprisingly. A little bit too slow coming out with his attack gets side tilted by Stardust. Sets up a nice little juggle combo. Is he gonna have a follow up? Follows it up with the cross. Edge guard situation and he's back on stage. Crosses him up with a back air and takes the kill for himself. Stardust taking round one pretty convincingly but a couple of mishaps from Darkholm. Gotta shake it off. Shake it off like Taylor Swift does. I had to think like for a good long time who that was. I was like, uh Talking about some Castle Siege. Come on, give it to me. It's on the stage list. Is it still on the stage list? Is it like independently banned here yet? I, I, I don't even know. I know that I know that regardless, no one plays it, but uh, I'm not even sure if it's actually viable still. Or legal, I guess. Talking about that Dracula's Castle music again. Simon Belmont's theme. This this man, he needs every every home turf advantage he can get right now. Stage, song, Simon. let's go. Simon! Ooh, going for Dark Simon too. That dark brunette. And that darkly shadowed armpit as well. <laughs> Never noticed that oddly specific detail. All right, running it back with the same characters, but hopefully without the unfortunate SD mishaps. And boy, if this is not just an edgy setup over here. Wolf with the dark color palette. Simon with the with the dark haired color palette. Dracula's castle. Let's go, boys. Oh my goodness, have you ever had an up air, up air, up air? How about four? Close percent start for the two of these guys. They are just bouncing on platforms over here, not willing to keep a grounded game. Cute little up B out of shield, grab some damage, and he's got himself an edge guard situation. Spacing that axe well, using all the tools in his kit there with the fire and the forward smash, but uh, Stardust just able to work his way back up on the stage and navigate all those perilous traps. Nice little down here to get back on the stage quickly and out of that, out of that juggle situation. Really similar percents on these guys. Gonna start looking for kill setups. Oh, Reflector, and talking about kill setups, goes for the side B off of that one. Just a little bit too low on it, it looks like. Oh, golly, doesn't know what he's going for there, but uh, he got a whip, regardless of what he was going for. Hey, maybe that's what he was going for. Nice little kill off of the, off of the up B. I didn't understand. I didn't realize that had such an early kill potential. That was pretty spicy looking, and he doesn't quite hold the reflector for long enough. Eats a big axe, but not big enough to kill him. Oh, cool little side B off of the side there, off of the off of the off of the ledge there. But uh, dies to the the return up B from Darkholm here. These guys killing with up B, man. It's a thing. It's a meta. Let's go. Oh, another reflector. Oh, oh, help me help you. This man says thanks for the cross combo. Can you give me another one? Let me start that again. Cross, reflector, side B, F tilt. Let's go. Look at Spicy Stardust. I love it. That was cool. I, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still harping on it. But either way, full stock lead now for Stardust off of that awesome conversion. Let's see if Darkholm has anything left in the left in the tank to fire back with. Let's see if uh, Edgy Simon can do anything still. Says, not an SD, not this time, not last stock. Let's go. Puts him way off of the stage. What was that interaction?
action. Oh my lord, he's explaining it right now. I wish I could hear what he was explaining to Stardust right now. He fell so fast. Did he like back? Did he did he like let go of ledge to jump back onto stage or to edge guard when like right as he got hit with the side B? He plummeted, but it didn't even look like the side B actually hit him. He absolutely plummeted. All right, game three, Stardust up two. Darkholm switching on to Ike over here. Hopefully he's a little bit more comfortable now. Maybe the swap is what he needed. Digging pretty deep there super early on and then Stardust with the return as well. Going for the Chad Ike right here. Future Ike going for that Radiant Dawn, baby. Oh my goodness, forward air, forward air, platform, forward air. 98% all the way up over 100 already onto Darkholm. Stardust is moving. He wants this 3-0. He says, take me to the finals. It is now best 3 out of 5 territory. This is winner's finals. The winner of this will move on into grand final. And the loser of this will still have one more chance down on loser's side of the bracket. Oh my goodness, so much shield pressure, you gotta let it go sometimes. And he's able to find the kill because of it. Charging that Aether up, goes for a high recovery. 200 IQ recovery on that one, staying outside the hitbox of Aether until he navigated his way to the ledge. Really nice. Throwing out some nares, but can't convert it into the up air anymore. A bit too high a percent here. Big parries coming out, and uh... A cheeky little mix-up there coming out from Darkholm with the up B, but Stardust not falling for it. Speaking of falling for it, falls into the up air. Finally, Darkholm able to get his big break there. Even the percents up here with an early juggle combo. Looking pretty close now. Ooh, a nice late falling nair there from Stardust. Ooh, grabs him right out of that. Says, hey, eat dirt. Throwing out a lot of moves on the shield right now, but not much is connecting from either side. Speaking of connecting, this guy's over here sniping. And <laughs> both players just waiting it out. You move first. No you! No you! And there it is! Kill from Stardust. Puts him on the last stock. Dark Home fires back. Another Aether, but this one connects. Stardust too low to pull any mix-ups like he had last time with his high recovery. All right, guys, last stock. Let's see what's gonna happen. Can Dark Home fight his way back into a best of five? Or is Stardust gonna take the 3-0 and move on to the grand final spot? Two Owensboro players that play together a lot. That makes for some pretty cool matchups whenever players are this familiar and this comfortable with fighting each other. It, it makes for some pretty interesting matchups because you'd see options that wouldn't normally come out uh, against the average player, knowing what they know about each other. Looking for a, a read on the, the counter there, but not quite able to get it. Stardust navigates safely directly to the edge. Both players gaining on percents over here. Oh, looking for one more hit from Ike, and that's the hit that he wants. Darkholm works his way back into the best of five with his first win. Fight for my friends. That's right, you fight for your friends, Ike. Fight for your friend, Darkholm. What kind of apple pie? Uh, apple. We like Ike. We like fight. Oh, the big Bowser Jr. hover coming in over here. Think about those mix up. <laughs> Members Mark, you gotta get that generic. You gotta get that generic Sam's brand, baby. Okay, the Sonic pick. 
Suddenly, this is a very different game. Let's see what happens. Let's go. All right, represent Japan. Sonic players. Let's see what happens. Let's see if he can uh, beat the blue speed demon. Or if he's too slow. When, when Sonic's in the game, the Sonic, Sonic's the name speeds his game. Seriously, though, when Sonic's in the game, you play his game. You wait for Sonic to approach. You try to punish on Sonic's approach. Like, you wait. Sonic controls the tempo. And that, that's one of the, the weirdest things about... Oh! Sonic being in the game. is It's just suddenly the dynamic is totally around Sonic. I say that, and, uh... Kill coming in for Darkholm. Looking pretty good right now. Oh, he manages to grab him out there. Say, hey, don't be teasing me now here at the edge. Watch these down tilts. I love that he just, he just revs it. And he says, nah, that's not the option right now. Darkholm looking for another kill over here. And he finds it back air. Oh my lord. He says, hey, you're not the only one who can rock blue. Darkholm looking like he's got this matchup under control right now. Trying to get himself a three stock. Is Stardust going to let him have it? Misses the back air. Feet not quite big enough. Here it comes again. The Nair into back air. One more... One more little aerial combo, and that might be it for Stardust. A throw and forward air. That's it. 3-0. Sonic was uh, not the swap. Wow, wow, wee, wow, wow, wee. Maybe he's just trying to build up some false confidence over here or something. Not sure. Welcome back, Axu. Made it to the hotel. Well done. Good to know you're there safe. You did it. You made it. Feel free to keep up with the rest of the tournament or pass out and lurk. It is up to you. You, you did it. You earned it. All right. Speaking of earned it, Dark Home really fighting for this comeback over here, taking it to game five and uh, coaxing Stardust Wolf back out. We've seen this match before, but we're going to see it again. Let's see if Darkholm can't make a better statement for himself. Stardust taking it a little bit slower, zoning him out with the projectiles and throwing some nares out over here. Playing a kind of a different game than we'd seen him on with Wolf before, and I would say a much cleaner game at that. Oh boy, maybe it was a Sonic palate cleanse, that's all he needed. Because this man is looking fresh right now. Really patient, waiting to take his time here, throwing out these lasers every time he has the he has the distance. Looking really different than a minute ago, but really clean regardless. Navigates his way downwards with the up B. Taking a lot of shield damage from that, but uh, without any follow-up. Kinda inconsequential. Full stock lead secured for Stardust now. Darkholm's got a work to find himself an opportunity back into this game. Oh! Nice. Grab into a couple of pummels, but just not able to land any of the aerials thereafter. Oh! That could have been the one there. Side B almost killing off the side! And the smash will finish what the side B doesn't. Darkholm taking full advantage of that spawn platform. Crack those knuckles. Might be kind of the, uh, I don't know, actually, here. I was going to say it might be kind of the the beginning of the end. But uh, looks like he's moving now. Just barely not able to secure that kill off the top. But uh, he's really going down swinging. Full stock deficit. Can he put him some work to bring it back? Nice little platform on the combo. <laughs> combo on the platform, rather, from Stardust. Dark home swinging, though, man. Not going down yet. Oh lordy lord. Stardust just ready to run back and just space that side B recovery out perfectly. Darkholm trying to throw this big sword out, but Stardust cranked it up a notch saying, hey, 
It was cute while it lasted. Let's put it away. Still looking for that killing blow though, hanging on the edge and biding his time, not wanting to get juggled as he is here. Waits out the Aether again. Back throw is still not gonna quite be enough. Going out there looking for the kill, connects with his up B on the underside of Ike's side B. Yeah, Darkholm looking a bit confuzzled there. Smiles on the faces all around though. Stardust taking the set three to two. Moving on to grand finals. Gonna hop back down to the loser side now and see what kind of action we can find over there. I'm sure to find something. Still a couple players left over here. We're gonna have Pop a Piece and Prattle. Not a matchup we've seen yet. With the winner of that matchup going on to play against Starkholm. So still another, still another chance for him to get back in this. I want to see randoms and grand finals. Not sure that's a request that's going to get granted, but we've seen some pretty goofy stuff in grand finals already these past weeks. I mean, go watch the, uh, the, the snake ditto that was on last week's grand finals. <laughs> There's always something interesting to see. You know what? It's never boring. I'll give it that. All right. Pop a piece and prattle. Put, 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 put. Isabel! You know you're gonna hear that when Papa Peace is playing. This man, this man does not have pocket picks. He's got pocket pups. It's Isabel. Loser semifinal. Getting pretty close, guys, with just about three, three matches left or so. Tuck yourself in, last call. Grab yourself a good drink. We'll see what happens. Three, two, one, go! Oh, the King DDD pick coming out again. Player three, bring back player three. No player three in sight right now. Just these two hanging out on a lilac cruise together. You've won a luxurious lilac cruise. Oh my goodness, both of them digging so deep under the stage right now. There's a lot of body to hit on uh, DDD with those little pellets. Oh my lord, he breaks the balloons and the pup spirit. Oh my goodness. One of the first players we've seen call out Pop a Piece's recovery tonight and actually find that kill off of a ledge guard. Go Paps! We got some Paps fans in the chat out here. So deep getting the quotables. Getting all those quotables. Where's that night Nightbot quote command? Let's go. Speaking of let's go, man. Prattle is not giving Papa Peace any breathing room right now. Right off the ledge. Oh my lord. Oh, he's got his own Gordo now. What's he going to do with it? He's going to throw it left across the stage. Absolutely brutal. Fires back with his own party popper though. He says, hey, I'm not going down without a stock. I did not expect DDD to be the, the character counter for the Isabel over here, but um, he's putting in work. What's gonna be the punish off the full charge forward smash? It's the falling nair, but just barely too late. You gotta respect that hammer though. I mean, it's it's got some ending lag, but like, boy, if it's not scary to try and get in there in that window and punish it and just grabs him under the stage again, Pop a piece! Oh! Just falling back in his chair right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the, the, the shoulder rub. Oh my goodness. He can't deal with this right now. That was absolutely zany. He grabbed him so many times with that mallet. He says, hey, you've got a squeaky hammer. <laughs> I've got a cheeky hammer. Let me grab some kills under the stage right now. Here's a barrel. Here's a barrel. Here's a barrel. All right, running it back with the same matchup. You know Papa Peace isn't swapping, and Prattle won, so I guess he's pretty comfy where he is. 
Let's see if it was just all because of Lilat. What's gonna happen on this stage now? Pain train! Choo choo! Prattle going into special fall. Hey, have your Gordo back! That's a much bigger pellet than what she's used to shooting. Oh boy, snipes on snipes. You'll think again. You'll think a second time before throwing out another Gordo. Did he just suck up the pellet? He can suck up, I mean, I know he can suck up projectiles, but like, oh good God, the pocket Gordo into the mouth of DDD and back at, how many times are they gonna, tra how many times is this Gordo gonna trade possession? What is this, this custody war? It's bad for the children. Think of the Gordo. Oh my God. <laughs> He just wants a home. Everybody's trying to give him up. Tasty pellet. And, and now he's dead. I don't even know how he ended up so far off stage out there. <laughs> Jeez, this guy. Oh my goodness, save the Gordo back. I love the quarter second of the surprised eyes on the Gordo when it gets pelted by the pellet. No, oh, big hammer charge, not having that. This is such a silly matchup to watch. Party Popper coming in, not getting anything though. Goes up with a confident Nair into DDD's recovery before he gets the smack back down. No, oh, Nair for Nair. I wouldn't want to be there if I was Isabel. All right, evening it up, putting a little bit of damage on the board from Prattle here, slowing down with the Gordos. Oh my goodness, that did not slow it down with the Gordo. The pocket from cross stage. Magnet pocket over here, have it back. No you. Literally, this game, this game is just, oh, the definition of no you. Oh my goodness, I can hear these guys just, I can just hear them belting. I can hear the belly laughs through the, through the wall right now. Check the score. We gotta get the score, the people need to know that Prattle took the game. All right, there you go. Now you know. But it looks like this game might be going to Papa Peace with these snipes. He's just giving that Gordo back. It's all yours, baby. You can have it. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay. Are you sure Isabel's neutral B isn't just Gordo? I'm pretty sure neutral's... I'm pretty sure Isabel's neutral B is Gordo. Papa Peace. Owning the projectile game here. One to one. <laughs> this is so much fun to watch. Are you taking me to Hanabo again? Neutral BS Gordo, but it's only ever useful against DDD. Don't it's a situational move. Don't use it in any other matchup. Ladies and gents, we're going to Hand and Bow. I love the rockin' one, soundtrack. Go. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. All right, here we are. Game three, Lizard Semi, Prattle Pop Peace, Isabel, King DVD. Let's go. Gordos versus Pellets. What was that interaction? I have no idea. Pocket Gordo, Sucky Gordo, Spitty Gordo. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh my god, the reverse pocket hitbox! It does not matter. He still got that Gordo. <laughs> Slam dunk. Batter up! Knocks it out of the park. What is this? I feel like these guys have just invented their own game. They've got a game within a game. When playing Smash isn't enough, you play freaking DDD Isabel, pitch and, pitch and catch, home run simulator, electroplankton 2019, stage spy, get out of here with my balloons. What is this matchup? What absolutely is this matchup? Secret to baseball mode. I mean, what what game are they playing though? I mean, like, they they got like they got like tennis, they got like baseball, they got football. I mean, they're throwing things, they're using rackets and mallets. Like, is this croquet? What are we on? Oh my gosh! I mean, I'm talking about that. And look at this. Is it even score over here right now? Even stocks, pretty close percents. Isabel getting launched cross stage right now. 
Haven't seen a lot of the fishing hook from Papa Peace. I know that last week he was all about the fishing hook. Not sure if this is potentially a bad matchup for it. I think he might have forgot he had it and just remembered. Because as I say that, he threw another one out. Oh my goodness. Talk about throwing stuff out. Can we see another forward air, Papa Peace? Can we see another? <laughs> Here comes two more for you. Three, four, five. Put a, put a ticker on the screen. Put a, put a ticker on the screen for forward airs. Hey, it's an important move. It's an important part of the kit, okay? Oh! Lloyd buried, bringing him up. And he's got another Lloyd buried right there on the edge already. I always like... Oh, good golly ledge trap! I, I, I never see the, the unexpected Lloyd. It's the most dangerous. Oh my goodness, almost a shield rate right, right there. But then uh, I notice immediately, I'm always like, how did that Lloyd get there? But then I see as soon as one's triggered, he's right on top of burying another. He's thinking about it. Another Lloyd buried there on the on the middle left side. <laughs> Spits the little pellet back. Why did he spit it so far down? It just plummeted. All right, back throw for the kill. Another Lloyd buried, but gonna take it out with his invincibility. Papa Peace had a bit of a percent deficit, and you don't want to hang out and get that the ledge against Prattle, man. He's been popping those balloons, taking those stocks. This is tense. Maybe it's the absolute lack of music. Maybe it's the, the bone-rattling, solid green background. Oh, the offstage fishing hook! The stage jump! What is happening? Oh, I thought he was going to get some kind of ridiculous offstage fishing hook kill right there with, the, with like, the turnaround throw or something. Can you, can you turn around whenever you're... You can turn around when you're offstage, can't you? Can't you? I wonder why he wouldn't have gone for that. If so, gosh, I don't know enough. No oh, big hops! Turn up into Nair. It's anybody's game now. They're at such high percents. What's going to happen? Who... Ooh! He killed him with the... He killed him with the with the, with the slingshot. Turn around, throw launches mostly upwards. That seems that seems more balanced than just putting people right into the blast zone. All right, win goes to Papa Peace with a, uh, a clean forward air. Oh, he killed him with back air. I was like, how did forward air ever kill at that percent? But I didn't see him turn around. Well done. Done, Papa Peace. All right, that means Papa Peace moves on to the losers' finals to compete against Dark Home. No, I'm so proud of my dad. Let's go, Dad. I'm telling you guys, Papa Peace is the king of those losers' runs. He makes them. He makes him. I, I, and I know it. I've seen him do it time and time again. The one time that I've seen him do it. <laughs> this guy, no, we got a his, he's, he's got a history. Let me tell you, it goes way back one week. <laughs> I'm sure he's done it plenty of times before too. But seriously, the one time I've seen him, he may he now the two times that I've seen, he has made quite impressive runs. He's, he's not he's not one to be down and out. All right, here we go. Dark home versus Papa Peace. A battle of attrition is ahead with two projectile characters. Kind of new to locals and stuff. Papa wins as he reset the bracket. Not right here. This is loser's final. The winner of this will. Wait, wait, wait. Am I actually talking out of my butt here? The winner, the the. He, he doesn't have to do a bracket reset for this. This is just loser's final. And then whenever he goes to the winner side for grand finals, the winner the winner here will go to grand finals, and they will have to get a reset before they can win grand finals. This is just a best out of five. To the best of my knowledge. Of course, I can always still be corrected. Papa Peace has a uh, early stock lead over here, but if Dark Home is able to grab this kill, there's not a huge percent lead. Cross comes in. Oh, but the axe is able to do the dirty work. Launching so much harder than the cross does. 
Nice little stage bounce there, but it's not enough to secure a kill. Hey, holy water! Saving that one for later. Be gone, demons! Holy water away! I wanted to see Papa Peas. I almost wanted to see him save that for like a ledge trap scenario that he could set up for himself. Nope! Oh, pockets the axe! Wait, did he? I heard it, but it's not there, so. Hmm, must have missed it or thrown it again immediately. Even up the percents pretty well. Oh! Just narrowly avoiding those feet. Fishing rod off of the shield. Oh, pockets the axe. Back at you. Right back at you. Ooh, up he is met with the turnips. Isabel's got those deep pockets, man. That's right. Like Tom Nook over here. That guy knows a thing or two about having deep pockets. All right, Papa Peace trying to hang on to his stock. And as I say it, his grip weakens. And he lets it go. Not a huge percent difference, and now no percent difference at all. Still anybody's game right here. Holy water in hand. Suddenly, Darkholm turns up the heat here. Papa Peace takes a takes an inside route on recovery and manages to get back on stage. Looking for the chase with his grapple there. Doesn't get it, but he does get the whip to the face. Oh, look at that! Look at that reaction from Papa Peace over here. Disgusting. Way to go, Belmont. Darkholm takes game one. <laughs> there's some, there's some happy people in the other room. Isabel. All right, running with the same mo, going into game two. Oh, Darkholm taking it on the dark hair again. I don't know what's up with that swap. Maybe maybe it feels like just when he needs that little extra oomph, he goes for it. Maybe it gives him that confidence. You know what? We all wear with pride. Whatever whatever floats your boat, baby. Whatever gets you moving and grooving. Going for that axe real close to the ledge there. I guess he just wanted that high hitbox, maybe. Oh, party popper. Coming up with nada. Oh, grabs the cross, throws it back. Gets the shield bounce. Charge forward smash there, man. Just connect. Hey, cross is mine again. I'll take it. But you can have it. I believe this is yours. I just came to return it to you. Trading pretty consistently right now. Both at really similar percents. Oh, and there's that high hitbox I was talking about on the axe. Whoo wee Killing off the top for that one. A really nice kill. Papa Peace says, still has a little bit of work to do, and as I say that, he goes way out there and digs deep for the kill. I see people on 100%, 120%, and I think, you know what? It's Isabel. They're not dead yet. Papa Peace proves me wrong. He gets out there and does what needs to be done to make them dead. You know what? If someone's not dead, make them dead. That's, 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 what is, that's Isabel's motto. Another grab on the axe. Boy, Pocket has the biggest hitbox. Nice party popper. Setting himself up an edge guard situation over here. More pellets, more pellets. Ooh, I thought Dark Home would start about moving over there. I thought he was going to set himself up a nice little combo. Oh, get punished for the up B. And the jacket's coming off. Take it off, Dark Home. Ow, ow. All right. Let's see what he can do. He's digging deep for this one. He wants this one. Let's see if he can mount a comeback. Nice up B. He's only got that 14% on him. Axe over the head. Ooh, running in for the grab though. Pop a piece. Looking clean. He's reacting. He says, I'm not predicting. I'm reacting, baby. Carry him off the top. Speaking about reacting. 
really good by Darkholm there to be able to catch that whenever they were both in that situation up there. Oh. Okay, got both hits of the cross right there. Looking like Darkholm taking off the jacket. I don't know, might be a fluke, but he might be on to something. Oh my lord. He is definitely on something. But for Papa Peace, it is not the stage. He cannot touch his feet right now. Another axe connects. This dog just barely hanging on. Oh, and that is it. Darkholm. Taking off the jacket. Absolute madman play. He was looking like he was down for a while there that game. But, uh... You know what? The jacket did the trick. He's got all the power plays. He's got the switching that, switching that skin for that dark hair. Taking off the jacket. Cracking the knuckles, man. What else does he have? Dang. Dang! That was a big smash attack that he landed. Oh, here's another power play. Moving on to Richter. Okay. You know what? I've been enjoying the Simon. It's been cool. It's been clutch. You know, we've had him here, but first game for Richter for the day. You know what they say? Variety is the spice of life. Let's see what happens. Back on to Smashville again. Squeaky, 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 squeaky. Cracking up those percents. Pop a piece. Breaking out his Sunday best with the pink outfit. He's not ready to go down. And he takes a stock. 18 seconds. Let's go, Papa Peace. Show him. Say peace or violence. Okay. Okay. Spin that whip. Spin that whip. Papa Peace. Come with that inside low recovery. It's just so hard for anyone to go and punish like that. Literally, we've seen one person do it do it well tonight. That was Prattle. But it's just, it's so hard to do. Look how far out he fades. And I say it's so hard to do. And what does Dark Home do? Coming in here proving me wrong. Look at this. Throwing out the back airs. That was nice. That was nice. He fires back and does what he needs to do to, to keep this game. Keep this game even. Dark Holmes cross, like coming like a buzzsaw through center stage right there. Looking like he's gonna cut the stage in half. Juggle situation set up. Going for a couple more up airs. Forward air there. Big edge guard situation and pop a piece. Just missing the recovery? Not really sure what happened on that one. Oh, going for that. that Predictive party popper, but didn't get the uh, stand up or roll in that he wanted. That unfortunate air dodge. Usually with Isabel, you, you get a lot of free ones with things like that, where you get those air dodges, and then regardless, you know, you have that recovery high enough to make it back, but not that time. Also, really, really close trying to convert the holy water into the forward smash right there, but not quite getting it. Oh, nice little stage spike coming out from Papa Peace. Cheeky, cheeky. All right, he's going to have to turn up the heat here. This is Papa Peace's last chance to stay in this tournament. This stock right now, 104%. You got to move, little dog. Got to do what it takes. Oh, let's see if he can just avoid that whip for a little bit longer. Finds his way to the ledge. Goes for a jumping recovery. Crosses him up, but now he's onto the other side of the stage. Barely misses the pocket on that axe there. Dark Home just giving him nothing to work with. But one more opportunity here. No edge guard. Oh, he's got center stage back. Goes for the fishing rod. Haven't seen that option in a while. Just trying to play it nice and slow and do what he can here. Playing for his tournament life. Oh, such a long hitbox and no more room for error at that level of percent. Dark Home. Takes the set, 3-0, and asserts himself back into the winner's side. Looks like we're going to get a run back of Stardust versus Dark Home. I don't know why I separated it into, uh, into, <laughs> into two parts like that, like the Duck Hunt, Dark Home. But uh, that's what I decided to do. 
So let's see what the heck happens. This is it, ladies and gents. Grand finals. You've all done so well making it to this point. I'm so proud of you. Here we are. It's not over yet. We may have seen it once, but it's like a, it's like watching a good movie. There's always something new to find. You see something new every time. Watching the same players play again, you know, you get, you're gonna see something new every time. So, stay tuned in. Have a good time. Enjoy your Friday. Welcome to the weekend, everybody. It's FNF 446. Let's get over to the players. See you there. Oh! Oh! Is this what we're gonna do? Is this what we are gonna do? Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Grand Finals. Stardust versus Starcomb. Wolf and Ganondorf! I can't help it. If you just if you just need me to get amped back up, if you just need me to wake back up, have more energy, and remember that I'm alive again, play Ganondorf. Get commentary bias. Hey, listen here. Let's go, Wolf. I, I love I love Wolf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Star Wolf all the way. Woo! Can't let you do that, Star Fox. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's gonna kick his teeth in. I love this! Edge guarding with the volcano kicks. Absolutely massive. Goes for the up air, hoping for a jump in, possibly, but uh, there it is. First stock to Ganondorf. Good golly, this man is rocking. Hits with the wizard foot while falling down. So much shield damage. Wolf able to grab that aerial in there, though. Ganondorf smash attacks, having a lot of startup lag, so, uh, you know, you can still get in there and punish them, especially if they're trying to charge them. Going for an edge guard. You know, risky option is Darkholm. Playing on Ganondorf, but I like it. Once again, too much startup lag on the up smash, and uh, Stardust manages just to fall in and get the aerial he's looking for. And there's the kill off of the up B. A lot more kills off his up B than I ever knew that he would be able to get. Kind of surprising. Falling back air, always a good option. Really safe. Very little startup lag on that one. Look at those combos coming out from Stardust, though. What's he going to follow up with? Oh, he was looking for the roll. He was looking for the roll read, and it would have been big if he was able to get it. But he says, I don't need it. Look at me confirm this kill. Oh, I was looking for the turnaround side tilt, but he gets the grab regardless and sets himself up into another edge guarding situation. Up air looking for the roll in right there, but not going to find it. Let's see if Stardust can't get his feet underneath him again. A little stage spike, and Stardust takes control of the match back. That right there, exactly why it's so scary to go for those edge guard situations when you're playing on Ganondorf with such little recovery, so easily punished when you're outside there. It can turn around on you so fast, and there it is! Stardust with a dominating comeback. Knowing that he is up a stock lead, goes for the side B, sends Ganondorf to an early death. Yay, 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 yay. Pretty convincing start out the gate from Stardust. That, that was a really big turnaround that match. Darkholm looked pretty dominating early on, but Stardust reminds him why he's on the winner side right now. It is a best three out of five with a potential bracket reset for Darkholm. Welcome in, Blue Platinum. I wish you could have made it to the weekly as well, but you know what? You made it to the stream. You made it to grand finals. We'll catch you next week. It's Friday. Oof. All right, Darkholm makes the switch over onto his boy Ike. We've seen him do well on it previously tonight. We've seen this matchup previously tonight. Let's see what happens. I like the soundtrack we got over here, though. Playing over on the on the Danky Kang. <laughs> yeah, that's Papa Peace just sitting back there, back there in center, just giving us a nice view, just giving us a nice little view, giving us a little treat, a little eye candy. Love you, Papa. All right, 90 quick percent, 96 quick percent on the dark home. Stardust is just throwing out these lasers. Playing a really smooth game right now. <laughs> this song's so jolly, man. This is this is the grand final song if ever I heard it.
Nope. Going for something cute over here. Dark Home says, nah, you can't have it, man. Come on. This is a grands, man. You're not trying to make me a clip. Oh, these boys are shielding. These boys are spot dodging. These boys are parrying. They're doing everything except for getting hit. No one able to take the first stock yet. But as I say that, oh, big edge guard from Stardust able to grab Ike side B. Oh, really cool grounded combo from Stardust right there. Not able to get that up smash at the end there for the PS de la Resistance. But uh, pretty good no matter what. <laughs> Such a good soundtrack, man. All right, let's see if Dark Home can't fire back and take this first stock. He's got to be wanting to get this dog out of here. 100, 160%. Aether's not going to be the one to do it, though. Stage bounce. Almost trying to kill this man. Good lord, he's trying to take two stocks before he gets his first. Ooh, and he does it. Dark Home's shaking his head, not satisfied with the outcome on that one. Man, put the jacket back on so you can take it off again. You can't, you can't make the power play and take the jacket off if the jacket's already off. Put the jacket back on between sets. All right, Dark Home taking a stock off of Stardust. You know what, he's got his, he, he got his toes wet. Here we go, let's see if he can't start moving. Man's over here getting inside his own head. He's just getting the game. Play! Ah! Stardust just catching absolutely everything he throws at him here. Stopping him at every point on these recoveries. Let's see if he can't get back on stage. Lands a nice forward air. Nair. Looking for some platform combos, but Stardust with the parries again and just spaces back out into lasers. Oh, Dodge is back on the ledge. Pretty spicy looking. Oh! There's a good kill. Dark Home's on a really high percent right now, but as you can see, all oh, the double up smash missing. He is just hanging on right now. He says, I don't want to go. Dude! Corner to corner on this stage right now. Dark Home is living 152. Finds his way back to center stage. I'm not sure he can survive another hit like that. But he does. Makes it to ledge two. And there it is. The Nair that doesn't kill him. Oh my gosh. Magnet hands. He's in the game. You lunatic. You're supposed to be dead. Dark Home says, I don't care what I'm supposed to be. I'm trying to win this game. Dude, what's he going to grab? Dash attack kills. Oh my gosh. Stardust finally taking the game right there, but uh, Darkholm just fighting tooth and nail. I mean, he's not the one playing Wolf, but good gosh. Trying to bring himself back into that game. Stands up. Get a little stretch, man. Get a little stretch. Shake it off. Limber up. Come on. Limber loose. Rubber goose. You got this, baby. Get yourself a, get yourself a nice stage. Pick the one you want. Take your time. Eternal Bond. Let's go. Coliseum. Okay. They're trying to bring the feels on this one. These soundtracks are throwing me for a loop, the way that they're just switching from one side of the spectrum to the other. All right, guys. This is it. Grand Finals, potentially the last game of the night if Stardust is able to carry his lead into a third win. Otherwise, we might be in it for the long haul if uh, Dark Home can, can take the jacket off, so to speak, and uh, mount his comeback here. Let's see what happens. He's got the home turf advantage now. Big boy Ike fighting in the Coliseum. And he's starting hot with the forward air into up air. Such a big song they got playing, too. Man. All right. He's spacing out pretty well so far. Stardust navigates right to the edge. 
Nice little down tilt combo starter. Gets himself a forward air, but Stardust is still spacing with these lasers right now. Darkholm has to work his way through all of them before he gets the chance to land anything. More nairs. More nairs. Let's go. He's landing these aerials now. Oh, and he grabs him with a forward tilt right there and a quick kill off of a forward air. Oh, boy. Maybe this is just what he needed. Another down tilt into forward air. Looking good. Stardust fires back with a few of his own. Oh, he spikes him, grabs that recovery right out. Roll those shoulders, Dark Home. You got this. And the surprising SD from Stardust. I uh, don't know exactly what happened, but uh, looking up for Dark Home one way or another. You never like to see your opponent SD. That's a lie. Sometimes you do like to see your opponent SD. You never like to take pleasure in your opponent SDing, but you know what? These guys are here to win. Dark Holmes SD'd himself. Can't dwell on it. Take this opportunity and keep pushing. Ooh, grabs the ledge off of that one. Probably a good play with Stardust being ready to react on the other side of the stage here. It's still not a free game by any means. A stock, a single stock lead in Smash Bros. Definitely not the end of the world. You see here now it's only a 58% lead, so let's see if Dark Home can get himself back into this and start that potential comeback run. Or if Stardust is going to carry him right back up to even percents. This man bet everything. And it did not come through for him. But boy, if that wouldn't have been cool. You got to respect somebody willing to bet everything like that. That was pretty cool. He had the throw. Not sure if it was the specific DI by Darkholm, or if it was just off by a couple percents, or Ike's weight, not sure what it is, but he miscalculated somewhere, and he missed the side B. But you know what? He took it off of the game with the SD in it, so... Sometimes you gotta go for that stuff, man. Sometimes you gotta go for that stuff. Thing is, if you throw out a move like that and you miss it, everybody's gonna forget. Nobody's gonna worry about it. If you throw out a move like that and you hit it... Oh! 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 oh, oh. Everybody's gonna remember that. Game four, Stardust Dark Home. Looking to start his bracket reset over here. Coming in with a jab, hot and heavy. But you got those ground combos from Stardust, man. Throw, dash, forward tilt. Looking for that spike off of Ike's recovery again, but not gonna get it this time. Crosses him up with the side B and not able to chase it down for anything else. Ooh, what about this one? Goes to the ledge that time. You still see you still see Stardust in there throwing moves out though, just in case. Just in case he's coming in. Okay. Okay, we're gonna lay here and think about it for a minute. Oh, he uh, attacks the wrong direction there. Ended up rolling all the way behind him there. A long roll from the from the ground get up. Misses the dash grab, just barely able to get the spot dodge off in time. Stardust fires with an early back air kill right here. A good start if he's trying to close out this tournament victory. <laughs> Both the players just uh, empty hopping a little bit over here. Say, hey, Tomahawk. Tomahawk, I'll see your Tomahawk and raise you a Tomahawk. Oh, hits him with just the tip. I don't think the Stardust was ready for him to get back on the stage with that, thinking he was probably going to end up grabbing the ledge. <laughs> I love the, the Animal Crossing banjo back here right now. Oh, he just barely misses. Really wanted the kill off of that forward air here. Darkholm trying so hard just to get this kill and stay in this game. Keep the bracket reset alive. Oh, and unfortunately, he gets spiked, punished off of Ike's bad recovery. That's going to happen sometimes. All right, Darkholm, you've taken the jacket off. What else do you have left? Oh, the counter! Can he make it back? He makes it back, ladies and gentlemen. At a one-stock deficit, Dark Holm has not given up. Thanks for the compliment, Blue Platinum. I hope you're enjoying what we have left of the Grand Finals over here. Dark Holm on the 60% getting kicked by these boots. Taking some space lasers, too. Mm, it's looking like it's gonna be pretty clutch if he does it. There's not much left for him to pull out of this book. 100%. Let's see if he can't work his way back in somewhere. A little bit of wiggle room. Just give me something to work with. 
Trying to start these aerial combos off. Quick 60%. He's tacked on, though. Can he find the kill without being killed? All the way up at 130. There's a lot from Wolf that could kill right now. Up smash, back air, just looking for that last hit. Heck, side B, he's got that stock lead. We've seen him go for it a couple of times. Is he going to give us a stylish finish? Oh, I thought he might have gone for it there. Playing it safe, saying, I want that win. Back throw's going to be it. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Stardust is your grand champion. Friday Night Fights 4.46. There you have it. Congratulations, Stardust. You worked for it. Fought his way all the way up. Took two sets off of Dark Holm. Just asserting his, uh, his victory here. And he didn't have an easy path to get here either. He made it through Mammoth Guy, Geo. Stayed on winner's bracket the whole time. And actually, looking back at this too. Oh, we. He came in with a 2-0, a 2-0, a 2-0. His early, his early win streak winner side was uh, unrivaled. With three 2-0s in a row. Holy cannoli. That man. Putting in work. Putting in absolute work over here. Enjoy this commentary? Yeah, feel free to go follow me on uh, Twitch TV forward slash Zealjake. I uh, play games over there. It's Twitch. You can imagine that happens. You might see some Smash over there time to time, but especially a, a large variety of other stuff there too. Uh, a lot of Apex recently, but, um, you know, all kinds of things. Story games and what have you. Five years of whatever the heck content you want going on over there. Thanks for watching tonight, everybody. I hope you guys had a great time. That was a really cool tournament. I liked everything that we saw. I'm glad we got to see Belmont. I'm glad we got to see Ganondorf. I'm glad to see we got all the players and, and, and all of their characters because there's always a lot of variety. It's always a lot of fun over here watching everything. I think my favorite match had to have been the DDD Isabel because that was just absolutely nutty. I have no idea what was going on most of the time in that match, but it was absolutely hilarious. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Come back next Friday for more stuff. Work with us here. Help us do great things. Hopefully there will be a new emote soon uh, with the 15 subs being hit. Thank you so much, Ace, for the uh, sub donations. That was absolutely phenomenal. Your support is uh, never unrecognized. Hopefully we get the kinks with uh, Nightbot ironed out and he is uh, less vindictive about the timeouts next time. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say here. So, uh, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to throw you guys over to the ending screen, if that's even a thing, just to see what it does. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Bye. See you later. Have a beautiful time.